afternoon. Welcome uh, to the City of Daytona Beach uh, City Commission Permits and Licensing and Goal Setting Workshop. We are delighted to have each of you with us. Uh, at this time, uh, we're going to go ahead and turn the meeting over to our city manager and allow him to frame the meeting uh, moving forward. Um, thank you, Honorable Mayor, Commissioners. Um, I think we're just recording, so just talk loud um, because it's not, I don't know if it's going out through the whole system, but I know that they're recording <clears throat> the um, workshop tonight. Um, I did want to say that um, you received a package of information um, in reviewing the packet of information. I, there was one letter that was left out um, that I made copies of, um, and that was our March 25th response for our JLAC letter. All of the other ones were in there, um, but in the package it was not, so I want to pass those out to you. This was our um, March 25th response. I have copies of it as well. Oh. Anybody wants I made copies too. I got oh. it on Okay. Well, it, it's in our presentation, but that was the only one. The we have other copies, and that was not sent on your on Fridays. But the other letter was sent there, um, so I, I had that for you all. Um, also, we're gonna add, we we have in here for project updates if time is permitting, um, but we don't have to have those. So I wanted to to frame the discussion and move the the commission priority recaps after the permitting and licensing and the recap is only the top three priorities that you all had from last year which were affordable housing improvement upon infrastructure for roads utilities and flooding and increased activities for youth seniors and visitors those were your top priorities from last year but i want to talk about the pnl funding which was the impetus of this discussion i'm going to provide some context and some facts to the discussion to help us frame our discussion um, there has been comments online and also within articles about um, the funding of this. So I want to just provide some context that the city has not spent, used, or misappropriated any PNL funds, as has been mentioned um, by some. Um, we are not also the only municipality who has received a letter relative to our PNL funding. Um, the auditors that we have have discussed these findings in previous presentations, also through our CAFR. Um, the city's unexpended building permit funds have been exceeding the city's average operating budget for enforcing the Florida Building Code for the previous years that you've received the JLAC letters for. Um, prior to July the 1st, 2019, there was no provision in the Florida state statutes limiting the amount of carry forward of unexpended building permit funds. So the cities, not only the city of Daytona Beach, but other cities throughout the state um, were not spending these money. So until 2019, these funds were not um, there was not a limit on how you can carry over funds until 2019. Um, we have received the JLAC, um, two JLAC letters. Um, one was February the 16th, 2023, um, and that is within the packet that you have right now. Then we received a, um, and we provided a spending plan, which was provided on April 11th, 2023. Uh, we also received a JLAC letter on January 24. 2024 and the spending plan was provided to the auditing committee on March 25th, 2024. Within the spending plan, um, it talked about um, the mobile command center, which was a discussion that came forward. And both of our JLAC responses, um, we put in there the potential of purchasing and bringing back to the commissioners um, the opportunity to, to do a mobile command center. Within those letters, we did not receive back from the auditing committee saying that uh, we could not, and so if we would have received it after our first letter, uh, we would have not put it in our second spending plan, which we did. Talking with um, Mr. Gross, and he providing us information on state statutes, we have that, and I put those state statutes within your packet that shows how those funds could be expended, and we realize that that's not the best use, and that based on our um, state statutes, we can't spend funds for a mobile command center that goes beyond just the permitting and licensing. So I wanted to, to say that. Um, so we are now in a position where we need to identify a spending plan and move towards spending the excess, excess funds. Um, talking with our financial chief financial officer and budget officer um, earlier in the day, we have about a fund balance, about $19.7 million um, that we have. Um, the undisputed amount that we need to spend um, by October the 1st um, is right now at about $11.4 million that they say we need to spend um, by October 4th. We are going to be contacting JLAC also to see if it's not about just spending it, 
but allocating those funds um, for other things. So if you look in your package, and if you would go to the, um, the JLAC letter of March 25th, um, if everyone got a copy, and that's the one that Commissioner Cantu also said she, she had copies of. And on page two and four um, of that, you would see that the letter went to the, um, the chair, um, um, Representative um, Caruso and um, Vice Chair Pizzo on the March 25th, um, I'm sorry, I want you to go to the, I'm sorry, April 23rd um, response, the first one, I'm sorry. And you will see our spending plan um, that we put in of how we would spend some of those are you, funds. Are you talking about April 11, 2023? Yes. What okay. did I say? You said April 20. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. April 11. Okay. So, and if you would also do the have the one for April um, for March 25, 2024, you will see the spending plan that was worked on by individuals from the city as well with our finance department. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> So you will notice our spending plan that has been, been set aside for us as a team um, to allocate funds to get those down um, that we want you all to tell us if you agree with these fully spending plans so we can update um, and also spend. So staff has been working on those two spending plans. We do have some things in the pipeline um, that will get us down in some of our, our recommendations in regards to acquiring property for uh, permitting and licensing or building something for permitting and licensing the um, other equipment uh, purchases facilities renovations that deal with our permitting and licensing and our building code and so we have those items here with the two building um, the plans that we have set aside for since we first did this in our um, 23 and 24 responses um, as I stated the actual accounts and and I know that Natalia our CFO and our budget officer, um, Fred, are here as well. But our 19.7 million, as this was as this afternoon, unless something has changed, of our balance and the undispended amount that we need to be spending is about $11.4 million. And so we're here to entertain any questions I, that you I may have. I do have a question. Since you brought it up, um, can you tell me what other um, city governments are having the same problem as us since I don't, I, this many years? Yeah, you I don't, brought I, it up. So. I don't have a list of the individuals. Okay, because I do have the list. Oh, okay. Thank you. Do you want to share the list? Um, City of Daytona Beach. There's no other municipality that's having the same problem as us. Okay. Any years? Um, when it first started, I think there was one municipality, but there's no other municipality that's having a problem like us with permanent licensing. And actually, I can share the website, and everybody can go on and see all the audits from JLAC. And just so you did say you sent a letter to um, JLAC, JLAC does the initial audit, and then the audits are actually sent over to the Audit General Office. Mm -hmm. That's two separate entities, even though they work together, just so everyone knows. Okay. Do you, go ahead. Proceed. Do you happen to know if other cities received letters, uh, like similar um, inquiries? There is a couple that received a letter um, back when they um, the state statute came out, but oh, there's you. no other. I have a question. So when I'm looking at this, I'm doing a quick comparison. Um, so we're saying that now we do have, if I'm looking at the right one, we are now placing the mobile command unit as of March 25th on here, along with the Marines, we're taking it, we took it off. Yes, we took it off. Um, as I stated that if, if they would have told us in the first letter we sent that this was not an acceptable expenditure, it would have not been out. Okay. So after talking with um, Mr. Gross, looking at the state statute, we don't think that we can make that as a purchase. The Marine unit staging platform, what is this? That deals with our, um, um, we have boats for our permitting and licensing as well as our police and fire that utilizes to inspect properties and things on the water. Okay. Um, um, can you tell me what the coalition project is? Which co location? Co location, excuse me, I'm sorry. Which, which one, which letter are you um, on? That is on this form right here. That was sent to us. 
It's at the very bottom, 150,000. Where is it, sorry? Phone location project. Oh, okay. At the this, very bottom. This one. I want you to make it. Um, you, it's right there, your second page. Fine. Right there, you have it in your, your hand. No, 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 Right there, yes. The very last one, co-location project. Where, where is, um, I saw on the, yeah, come on. And just go to the mic and state your name. <laughs> <clears throat> Good evening, Hassam Razika, Chief Information Officer. Uh, the co-location project is uh, another location where we can stand our infrastructure. So should our um, data center at the police department at Valor uh, experience any natural disasters, it allows for the functionality of the city, another location, which would be essential for the PNL uh, operations as well. Okay, explain that. PNL would go over there to the police department. Yeah. So the city's infrastructure right now resides over at the at Valor, the police oh, department. Police department. Okay, gotcha. Um, if we have a natural disaster that takes that location down, city operations altogether would cease, except for some cloud-based uh, uh, services. So for any services that would be essential for the PNL department to continue operation, we could stand up a second location that would be a backup. So if we have something that takes down the network. We would have another location for uh, PNL to continue services to access um, their resources, servers, files that will be at a backup location. Okay. Um, my next question over here: We have um, eleven for two, um, F two fifties for six hundred thousand, and then we have over here on the same page we have seventeen pickup trucks, nine hundred and twenty-three thousand, and I do have the. A question asked about that, but looking at both of these different audits that was submitted and what was submitted to us, we actually, they're all different figures. I don't get it. And, and it looks like there's more than just one project. There's two or three projects here, correct? Who can answer that? There, there are numerous projects on the both of the spending plans that you okay. have in front of you. So we got the Marina project which we approved in tw April 5th, 2023 for a half a million dollars for the renovation, correct? That's, am I correct on that? We just, I, just going well, that was the last that. commission meeting, then we extended that for two years mm -hmm. to April 5th, 2027. Okay, so we have that project going on, which the renovation is a half a million dollars. And my question is, it says for, gosh, there's so many different figures here. Um, Renovation and modeling. This one is a million and a half, so this will be a different site, correct? Uh, I'm not following. Okay, go to April 11, 2023. Uh, hello. Okay, um, under four, $4 million dollars acquiring the property. Then we got a million and a half for renovation and remodeling of the new facility. Oh, you, the acquisition of property. Oh, okay. Uh, for, for uh, yeah, the million and a half. Now what? What is that renovation for? If we were to acquire property, that that's if we were to inquire, and that's, that's what was that's sent over, correct? If, if we were to acquire a building, okay, there would need to be renovations if the building did not meet our standards. So they okay. set aside. So that design. is something different from the marina from the meeting room yeah, for training, correct? Yes. Okay. And those figures are on both. Okay, and then the 160000 and the half a million dollars for IT, is that for not the marina? That would be for a new building, correct? Yes, it, it says the IT media and communication equipment okay. for the new facility if you all move for us to acquire it. Okay, and then on April 25th, uh, Construction PO coordination center review team meeting room. We have right here on April 5th it was sent in six hundred thousand for construction and PL um, coordination center technical review team meeting room. 
um, construction to begin on June 2025th. But wouldn't that meeting room be at the marina you're talking about? No. That's no. a totally different. Yes, we have a technical review team that meets here. Um, or, or they meet on Zoom sometimes, but yeah. we're Okay, the room. so if we go back to here, and it says Chambers upgrade, $250,000 on this one? That is the city commission. That would be up there, correct? Okay, so we can't do that with that money. We, we can do that if they're utilizing the facility for code enforcement and P&L meetings, which they do do. No, you cannot do something that's already, okay. am I correct on that? For the, for the chamber upstairs to upgrade that. You, you, can't, you can't spend P&L funds for activities or programs other than building code enforcement. The, the question, and the statute doesn't answer it specifically, is what do you do for expenditures that might be shared among users? And Correct. so if you looked at my memo to the manager, I gave the example of a, a purchase of software that might be used by multiple departments. Uh, the only guidance the statute gives, other than to say that you can't spend it for things other than uh, uh, building code enforcement by permits and licensing, is that the local government has to adopt uh, standard practices, including acceptable accounting principles, to ensure compliance. Now, I, I'm not an expert on standard accounting principles, but having worked with finance on these kinds of uh, shared cost issues over a number of years, my understanding is there are different ways of allocating how those costs are shared and how those costs are allocated depend on a, a lot of facts. If, if you were going to ask me how might the cost of a new uh, or modified chamber be shared, I, I would, I would want to get input from the CFO who's more knowledgeable about the standard accounting practices than I am. So you're pretty much saying at this time you can't make a decision on whether we can use that funds? Well, I, I can tell you what the law says, and, and that's what my memo does. But you're asking a factual question. I don't, I don't know the answer to that factual question. So may I interject? So were you saying that because the chamber is used by P&L, that would be the sharing? Because of, yeah, we use it for us. We, we only come it. twice a month. Yeah. But they have meetings there as well, so that would be shared, as you just indicated. And that's how we could make that, that, uh, that adjustment? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Does that help? Oh, I actually knew the answer, oh. but <laughs> but the problem is with the answer, he's not for sure because it could go to JLAC and then go to the auditing, and we could have to pay pay the funds back. Well, that's always true in Correct. any in with regard to any expenditure for items that are shared between different uh, fund sources or, or or different user groups. But whatever your projection is before you engage in the expenditure, if it's not correct, then during a, a subsequent audit, uh, if you receive an audit fund, you might need to reallocate uh, to reflect how things have occurred historically. And what the percentage is, we use it or who else uses the timber? Yeah, and, and, and I, I'm not telling you that in all cases you have to allocate according to a, a certain percentage of use. Again, I, I think it depends, among other things, on how easy is it to estimate the sharing of, of, of the facility or the software product? There are other rules that could apply based on, on that issue as well as the amount of, of money at issue. Again, I think if you wanted to hear more specifically about that and how that works generally, I would want to hear that from the CFO. So I'm looking under the additional staff. Is that for? It's 175, 175, and 50,000. It's for one person? No, that's for more than one. That's so the 175 covers how many positions? Lynn, did you, did you hear the question? Good. Where are you looking at? On the very bottom, the, um, the, just the, the salaries of the March 25th, 25th one. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Now, let me be clear on that. Glenn, the question, and maybe um, March 25th, our yeah. CFO, Natalia, may be able to help or even sex that. Trying to, she's trying to determine how many new employees, if we were to allocate the 175 per employee, how many new additional employees would you be trying to bring into the organization? Glenn Urquhart, Chief Building Official, City of Daytona. 
Um, the, those, the, originally, because we've had three uh, different uh, reports, so we're, we're responding to the letters. So you do have one from 2023, then you have 2024, early 24. Uh, then we just re-up that this year, and that's, you'll see on the one sheet where it's 400,000 for two positions. Mm -hmm. We were trying to bring in a position to be a liaison between code enforcement and the building department for permits and licensing. So that's one of the positions. The other position is a BT occupational inspector, which uh, we do over 2,000 inspections as far as fire inspections uh, for the fire safety. And that would be for an additional person in that. So that would be two positions. So I'm just, I'm super curious. So 175 gets me two positions or one? Because there's 175 and there's another one for 175. So the, the 175 would be with the benefits and everything all added into it. That was an estimate. And so it's not just salary. I'm in the wrong profession. I'm going back to fire school, possibly code enforcement school. I, I've made a terrible error in my profession. Okay. And so given that, what is, a, what is floodplain management? What is that? Floodplain management that we deal with as far as part of the Florida Building Code. So you, you deal with elevation certificates on every property. We deal with um, as the buildings, the new buildings are being built, we have to make sure that they adhere to all the floodplain management rules. Um, so we were looking at one point to get an engineer to uh, add on to staff. We had it advertised for a year, so that would have been part of the 2023, but we couldn't fill that position. Nobody applied. So that's why you do have some, some of the numbers of 2023 that haven't been done yet and as well as the construction uh, on some of the projects because you, you have to wait for them to pass through, wait for them to get all of the background paperwork. And then, of course, we have to present it to the commission. And then once you guys approve it, then we have to still move forward and get on their agenda. So that, that's why you can have some, uh, some of the numbers that are kind of overriding each other. Commissioner Paris. Glenn, I have a question about the rental license inspector. Is that included? Would we yes, be able to pay for that also? The, the in inspector that we're hiring, that's the, the business tax occupational inspector. So the rental inspector that's usually hired, that's through code enforcement. So we cannot apply any of these funds to that? And that's all to be determined by y'all. Now that the Code, code, wait, enforcement, wait, wait, wait. Co code enforcement uh, does enforce the International Property Maintenance Code, which is a subsidiary of the Florida Building Code. So it, it is part of the Florida Building Code. So we would be able to hire another person for rental licensing? To be determined and inspected. by I'm sorry, to be determined by y'all. Yeah, if you, if you, if right that's an option, we, we'd be able to do that. If yes, that's what we decide, yes. okay. Are you saying from this from this money year or a separate additional funds? That would be a, of the monies that are left over um, that aren't spent on any of the projects. You would be able to utilize them as far as in uh, some code enforcement. You can. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that would also answer a question. Some of the stuff like the mobile, um, mobi mobile thing take that, off. that cannot be used. Yeah, that's all. So what happens if we can I don't understand why we're, we approved something in 2023 at the, um, the marina, um, and we're doing renovations on that right now for training, and we have this over here, so what's going to happen to this, and where are we moving permit and licensing? Since it says we, this was sent to JLAC, where, is, where are we looking at land? There, th th thanks. There are two recommendations that staff will, will be bringing to you all. But all this was sent to JLAC, not just, so it's, it's $11 million. But when you sent this to JLAC on March 25th, 2024, we have the marina and we have the other one, um, the building, um, whatever the land that we're purchasing. So which one is it? Or is it both that you were bringing before us? The letter for we submitted to JLAC has acquisition of property located within the city limits for PL new facility. 
Um, that was the four million that goes to the acquisition of property. It had nothing to do with the marina um, training. But the marina is in here as well. Yes. Okay, that's what I'm saying. So everything that was sent to JLAC, we are, it's both. So, and no one's discussed that with us. We, the only thing that we knew about was the marina. Because we have not brought it to your attention to um, discuss. Why wouldn't you bring that to our attention we, before you submitted it to JLAC? No, the letters were submitted to JLAC and you all had copies. We've been submitting this for two years. They've been a part of our CAFR and our audit saying. And we've been going through this audit for a while and I just don't understand. You haven't answered my question. Why wasn't this brought before us? It was. These, these letters have been part of our audit and our... Okay, yes, it's been online. None of, I mean, I didn't look online. Okay. But it was I, get what, I get what you're saying. But it was I'm delivered to you. Why haven't you had a meeting before this telling us about this other property? Because we haven't brought anything to you all for property. We've been but you sent it to JLAC. No. Yes, you did. Well, I, I have yeah, it right but here. Do, do you want me to read what it, we sent to JLAC? I know exactly what you read. Okay. I'm reading it, too. I'm the one that found it because you didn't have it in, in there to just now. Four you never mil submitted it to well, us. We have two plans. You have two plans. Yeah. Yes, please. Go ahead. So the two spending plans from April 11, 2023, mm -hmm. to JLAC, and also March 25, 2024, to JLAC, it discussed acquisition of property located within the city limits for a PL new facility. The same recommendation um, was uh, updated because we had not found a location and not presented anything to the commissioners. It says acquisition. It doesn't say we've located the property. It doesn't say we submitted a property. We're, we're going to go after acquisition and bring something to you all. So is this more of a like an aspirational concept? This is how we intend to spend the money when the money is actually spent. This is how we intend to spend. That is correct, that's and that's what they re that's it. what they require us to submit back okay. to them each year when we the audit report comes. Okay. How do you plan on spending the money? So it's a projection. Yes. Yes, and I understand that. I'm just asking why we haven't had a workshop before this, asking what we wanted you to do, or bring bring it forward to us, telling us. This is what we have decided. Do you got, do you approve of this? That's all I'm asking. These were part of discussions that we've had, but we haven't had a sit down workshop and say, is this the actual plan that you all want? Right. I mean, we probably could maybe solve this audit a long time ago if you mm -hmm. had come before us and asked us, what do we want? That's all I'm asking. I have a request. Mm -hmm. So on February 16, 2023, Where? this JLAC okay. sent, uh, I guess, a letter to the, the, the mayor. mayor. Mm -hmm. Is it possible moving forward that if something like this is sent that we all get a copy to find out? Mm -hmm. Because I didn't know about this. I and saw the audit in the book that they had given us, but I did not have a backup of the spending plan that was provided April 25, 2023. Uh, since it's such a large amount, because that amount was $8 million, I think it should have been brought to us to put a plan together to see what we wanted to present to them. And does just does so anyone you know, agree with that? The letter that was submitted to JLAC on March 25th, the mayor's signature is not on this, only the city manager. Yeah, because they asked the, the city Correct. manager so, to respond. Mm -hmm. Right, to so the, um, the mayor did not have this either. Mm. Oh, I, I got a copy of it. You got a copy of this? You did not sign it. Okay. I didn't sign it, but I get it comes in the law. And also, the other, I don't know it's uh, an issue, but from our fiscal year 2020 2021, we had it, it just keeps going up. So, revenue derived from fees. I'm just going to round up. It was $6 million in 2020 2021. Then in 2021 was $8 and then mm -hmm. I don't know what happened in 2022, 2023, but then it went to seven million. So right now, the amount that keeps getting forwarded, it went from nine million to 12 million to 19 million. Oof. So are we overcharging somewhere because we just keep getting all this? It's reflective of the explosive growth that we're experiencing. Okay. It's not 19 million right now. No. The numbers, the numbers, the first set of numbers that you were comparing were the 
remaining revenues that exceeded the previous four years at four year average. That number has been going up, and right now it's it's in the neighborhood well, of eleven million. Okay. Well, according to the twenty, it's the City of Daytona Beach Building Permit and Utilization Report that was online. Right. So right. that's and what that's, the that's, the, that's, that's the whole the, fund balance. Correct. Well, that's my point. And, and what JLAC is concerned about is the portion of the fund balance that exceeds the prior four fiscal years average operating budget. And that's what, so, and that number has been going up. You're, 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 We're you're not the only ones up. who have experienced all this growth. So if nobody else is receiving these letters, I'm just confused as to why we're the because only ones. Because we haven't taken care of ours, uh, where we should spend this, because it wasn't brought to us to handle it correctly. Okay. <laughs> it's not true. Is there a penalty? Is there a penalty that we incur as a result of this? So uh, at some point in the JLAC audit process, uh, if JLAC isn't satisfied, they can direct the uh, state agencies that are responsible for distributing revenues to the cities, such as sales tax, communications taxes, to cease distributing them until, until the corrections required are made. Huh? In addition, under 553.80, which is the section that deals with these uh, provisions, any person who has, you know, paid for a permit could sue in court to, to require the city to meet its responsibilities. I'm not aware of any suits that have ever been filed oh, in that Daytona regard. Beach. I'm sorry? We're but, Daytona Beach right Right, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. Can we? Uh, and we just have different figures. So actually, the bottom line is we need to figure out how we're going to get rid say. of this money. Can, can we, we now yeah. move towards uh, <clears throat> figuring out how we want to do that? Uh, I kind of understand the big picture of what has transpired, but uh, and even from the idea of building a new city hall, that money was part of the reason why people wanted to do that. So. It's not what we really wanted to do. So now let's determine what we want to do with the money so we can address this. The well, best we've already we've already spent some of it, which is um, at the marina. If you look at the two letters that were sent responses, these were items that came from staff members that are working in each one of the areas of what we thought would be beneficial to spend some of those funds um, that will take us down from many of these items um, as a starting point. Uh, but always remember anything that's over my spending level, I have to bring that to you all for mm -hmm. approval, even if it is a recommendation. So none of these could be spent, funds could not be allocated without coming back to the commission on any of these items. And Mr. Feature, what, what, one are you, what piece of paper are you talking about? The recommendations that are in the letters that went back to JLAC. Of April how, and March. April and March, okay. how the funds But that's be. what we haven't determined if that can be spent that way. You had, you had a poor question on which one. There are uh, actually uh, a few of them, and actually when we had a meeting, you were supposed to get a summary. I, I think I know what you're talking about, okay. Commissioner. So the statute generally says that your, your building permit revenue can only be spent for purposes of enforcing, enforcing. the Florida Building Code. That, include, that would include code enforcement, it includes inspections, it includes office space and equipment and furnishings that are related to those activities. But for the excess fund balance, which is the part of the fund balance that exceeds the prior four fiscal years mm -hmm. operating budget. The act has more restrictions and they're very specific restrictions. Mm -hmm. So instead of saying for that excess fund balance that you can use it to enforce um, the building code, I want to go. I want to go to my email, which is which is in the packet. And, uh, thank you. You can see it too. The express language of the statute says it can only be used for one, rebating, rebating or reducing building permit fees, or two, paying for the construction of a building that houses the building code enforcement agency or the training program for building officials. 
So the express language says you couldn't spend it on computers or, or personnel. Uh, you can only spend it on these two activities. Mm, now, correct. JLAC has apparently been willing to allow the city to spend it more generally for building code enforcement purposes. And if JLAC approves it, then it's, it's a pretty good indicator that you know, JLAC's not going to give the city any, any grief as those uh, approved expenditures are made. And the JLAC, actually, JLAC can't approve that. The JLAC or the Auditor General, Correct. whoever. My, my point JLAC is... JLAC sends it over to the Auditor General, because um, you do not specifically have a letter saying JLAC approved. My, my, my point is, I'm sorry, Commissioner, is that neither JLAC nor the Auditor General have any power that I've seen reflected in the statutes or the regulations to waive the specific requirements that I just mentioned. That for this excess fund balance, again, that's the portion of the fund balance that exceeds the four prior fiscal years average operating budget, you only spend it to rebate or reduce fees or to pay for the construction of a new building. Now, I, I can't tell you what might happen if, let's say JLAC and the Auditor General approved this spending plan that you've seen and we proceeded to start spending down uh, building permit revenue for those purposes. J, let's say JLAC is okay with it, the Auditor General is okay with it. If a, somebody who's paid a building permit fee previously mm -hmm. then sues us in court because we're not spending it for the purposes in 553.80, I cannot tell you that we're protected from that suit based on what JLAC and the Auditor General approved. And so, to me, the, the most law. conservative approach and the one that best protects the city from, from that kind of thing is to follow the strict language in the statute. Which With be, regard to the excess fund Which would be the last bonds. two, right? The last two, the building, rebating the building. Rebating or reducing or, or paying for the construction of a building okay. or structure that houses uh, a local government building codes enforcement agency or training program. Paying programs. for the construction of a building. So that would mean a new build. It's a new build. A Correct. new build. Mm -hmm. And within that new build, we cannot, or we can, sounding we cannot, put in uh, the media, the IT infrastructure. We cannot I, use I, it I for that purpose. I think that that would likely be an allowable expense. If, if it's a building that's intended to house your personnel and there's no chairs in that building. So you believe all of that would go under I think the so. building? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Also, one of the things that staff has been discussing with the P&L senior level management is the possibility of waiving fees like you all did um, recently for um, certain areas for roofs and all that, that we could waive fees for a period of time um, that will probably spur some development um, in, the, in this area for developers that the potential is there to waive fees to get down to a certain amount where people want to do um, things that need permits those fees can be waived for a period of time, six months to a year. It's also a recommendation. That will help us not to be adding to right, the P&L the, the mm -hmm. funds. In which I how agree do, on that Yeah, as how long well. did we do that before? Two years? Yeah. Yes. That's two years. Like only one area, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. And we're, we're looking at recommending it could be done um, citywide. That would be great. Yeah. Yes, I like I that. Like that. Your, your, your excess, I'm sorry, your excess fund balance right now That's for money in the first place. It is $11 million. Your total fund balance is, a, is I think, 18 or 19. 19.7. So 19 minus 11 is, 19 minus 11.7 uh, is $7 million. So the average operating budget for the last four years is $7 million. And, and as Commissioner Paris pointed out, the fund, excess fund balance has been increasing. And it um, will continue to increase right. because of the growth. And that's why one of the recommendations is to go about waiving fees for certain areas, the excess funding comes down, um, but we're still growing as a community. Not that it matters, but I'm going to just say it. Um, so we're already growing as a community now, which is how we got into this position. And yeah. So then I go into my concept of existing roads, existing entrance and exit and highways and LPGA and Smoke farms, etc., and then we and I, I totally agree with waiving the permits, and I think it's a good idea for the residents. But then we're promoting again more growth. Mm -hmm. But are we managing what comes with that? Like, do we have the ability to say in these areas, 
we, we're already having some issues. Well, How do we feel about if, that? If, if they're, they're zoned um, for those areas and people have already um, went through the PD process to try to, some of these things that we will not be able to just stop. Um, but that's where I think one of the issues or concerns I have with this particular statute is because we can't take this excess funding to put towards infrastructure. No, I know. To, and that's, that's one of the things that I think that should be thought about from a legislative standpoint well, in the future if they were ever to think about changing this because if some of this excess funding could go towards transportation improvements, uh, okay. public safety, you, who knows what we could use it for. Uh, going back to your point, the city commission could, as a, as a policy matter, decide only to waive building permit fees for, for renovations or for affordable housing, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. uh, but I suspect that if you were to limit it in that fashion, your excess fund balance would Still continue would to grow. Yeah. Unless, um, well, it would continue to grow unless long term, uh, you know, you, you also reduce the fees for those who, who are actually paying them. It, here's something that's a little bit tricky about establishing your your building permit fees, right? As we talked about, the the law requires you to establish your building permit fees on what you project to be the cost of enforcing the program. And prior to 2019, when the law changed, it was a common practice, uh, my understanding is, for, for municipalities to, to sort of pocket that excess and save it up. And the reason is because building construction can be very cyclical. For, I mean, re re recall what happened in 2008 when the real estate market crashed. What cities that don't have a reserve have to do is they have to, and if, and if they use their permit fees to pay for that operation, they're letting a bunch of people go. And then when the market picks up again, they can't find people to, to work for them. And in the meantime, the statutes put cities and counties who administer uh, Florida building code uh, programs on a shot clock to, to receive applications and turn them around and approve them. So it, it's, it is a difficult situation for local governments to be in, and it's, and it's gotten more difficult because of the new statute. I have one other question. I'm just looking at this. Are we leasing our own building? Which, what? At the marina? Yes, that's, that's, we, we have our utilities department in our marina building, and that's one of the things about trying to find space where that can become a, a real business enterprise by moving utilities out into another space. No, um, I, but it says 120000 for a new lease agreement for P&L training facilities and oh, marine equipment storage. Yeah. So we're going to... We we are limited in our spacing, and those are enterprise facilities. Explain that. I'm sorry. Enterprise facilities, okay. you have to pay to use the facilities, even though they may be city-owned properties. Okay. And that's a, a, a perfect... Um, situation, or almost a perfect storm to be able to get P&L into their own property that we can move people out of a building shut that should be a commercial property, which we're using now for utilities. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so where do we go from here? We'll Actually, I think um, our city attorney needs to go item to item to see what can be spent. Mm -hmm. Um, before we make any decisions. If you're talking about uh, my making a decision on, on the items that are listed in the March report, I, I, I can't do that. I can, I can tell you what the law says. Uh, I can tell you what the law specifically says regarding uh, uh, the excess fund balance, and, and that may be different from what JLEC would allow. Well, I would, but I, I, but just to cut to the chase, my recommendation is to comply with the literal language of the statute. Okay, so I would like you to go back, go item to item, send us a report of what the state law allows. I can tell you what the what the law says, but if you're talking about making factual conclusions, that is for you all or the manager well, to do in, in terms Correct. of complying with the law. I understand yes. that. Commissioner Cantu, what was the governing body that you said is the one that audits that says this is allowed and this is not allowed? You said it's not JLAC, it's somebody else? 
No, it goes to the general, the general audit. The auditor general. Okay, so the auditor general, have they approved other projects that we could look at that were yeah. already approved? Yes. And actually, none of this is actually went to the audit general. I mean for um, other Galac cities, is still not under, it's still under the city. I'm oh, talking about other cities. cities that have already used their funds, so maybe we could just look and see what they had approved. Well, I mean, apparently JLAC approved last year's spending plan. Yeah. So there, there's an example right there. They approved our spending plan last year's that spending we provided? Plan, and it had to be modified when, when staff wasn't able to put together projects that would meet that spending plan and present them they to you for approval. They didn't actually approve it. Who, who no, would my approve understanding it? is no. my they understanding. They did not receive a letter. Sorry. No, because I called. Have, and have we? A question: Have we ever received a letter from JLAC? Yes, we have received letters, but they uh, don't. Okay. They don't actually approve. Okay. They ask for a response. We send a response. Once we send a response, then they go through it. They come back more. After they're finished, it goes to the general audit. The general audit looks at everything to see if they agree with JLAC. After JLOC is pretty much <laughs> done, it's up to them if they're going to come back. Uh, come back. So we've never actually been approved for anything we have yeah, sent. So, That's why so, we, we've been going under the, the, this audit for a long time. So we haven't been approved, but we haven't been rejected either. Disapproved. Nothing that we right. spent but has been rejected. But if you rejected. know how state works, it doesn't happen overnight. <laughs> but but uh, going back to Commissioner Paris's question. We don't spend question. this money, though. I'm sorry. We're going to spend this money. Yeah, going back to okay. Commissioner <laughs> Paris's question, if hypothetically we'd had an acceptance letter from JLAC or the Auditor General for these expenditures, but they don't comply with the, the specific requirements that I laid out for the excess fund balance, it may not matter if, we, if we're sued for failing to comply with the statute. Correct. And we'd certainly there's, argue, we'd certainly uh, argue that their approval <laughs> is meaningful, but there's nothing in state statute that allows either of those two entities, JLAC or the Auditor General, to trump the requirements that, that uh, I read out to you. The state. Well, I, I, I'm not in favor of giving the money back. I don't so think any I, I want to make exists. sure that I, well, I want to make sure people know that I'm not. So I want to figure out what we need to do to spend the money and do so in a responsible way um, that doesn't jeopardize us having to pay it back, but that might happen in some case, uh, but probably not. It's not been their so. normal policy from what I can see. So let's begin to see which ones. So are you saying you don't agree to give some of this back to the residents? Residents mm -hmm. like, well, what do you mean? Um, I, waiving permits. Oh, that's a different matter. Right. That's not this. Right, that's what I'm asking. That's not, okay. no, 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 no. No, no, I'm always for, uh, you know, we got excess, give that back to them. But I'm not, I don't want to give, give it back to the developers. Right. Um, we, we're paying a lot for what they're doing, and they benefited. We benefited in some ways, but we need to, you know, I, to figure out how to spend this money. Okay, acquisition of property within the city limits, p &L new facility. Uh, and it's on both reports. It's on both reports. Mm -hmm. What report are you looking at? Both. I'm 25th. Looking at, I'm just looking at the 25th. 25th. They're, they're on both. Um, and the city um, staff has been working to bring some options to the elected officials on acquisitions or um, <laughs> purchasing property to build a p &L facility. Um, and the reason it has not been brought forward in the last, because we were working on it in the past two months, is because of the letter and the discussions that came forth um, from the from the, the commissioners about expenditures of P&L funds. Okay. okay. So you have some ideas? Yes, that we can bring back. That you can bring back. Okay, and so that next $1.5 million would refer to the renovation of the same okay, wait a minute, but parcel? If I'm, I'm not okay. <laughs> Because if they're looking at property, we just approved for a training facility over there too. So why wouldn't we have it all together? The training facility for permanent license. Because you all may not um, purchase the property. You may say you don't want to purchase the property and we still need training to take place now. Okay. Well. Do you get. I get that. So, yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, give us the option to know if we want to, because, I mean, I'm going to acquire, so I don't, we should have the option to have, have acquired that before that. So.
So wouldn't you want to acquire that? Wouldn't you want them married together? Yeah. Who wouldn't want them married together? All of us, together? I think, would. We wouldn't want them separate. I mean, mm. makes sense. I, don't think it's, that, I don't think it's right right now that they're at the marina and we got permanent licensing here. It doesn't make any sense to me as it is. We don't have so space. if we're going to look at property, I think we, we should look at it all together. We don't have the space so, right now for them. No, we understand but can that. You, can you saying, marry them together? By the we, we can bring back recommendations on that, too. Is that beneficial to the staff as we perceive it to be? Um, it, 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 it depends on what we're looking for in regards to the training and what they're going to do at the facility. It, it just it depends on the technology that we're going to put in it and the property we purchase. It may not work for all the training to be in that facility. And you actually told me um, about building out for permanent licensing. Yeah, I, that was one of our options. Because we could build out for permanent licensing, also get a new city chamber underneath the impact fees for the new city hall. Am I correct on that? And then you said something about a parking garage, which that could come out of. Commissioner, when we're having fees. discussions, it's, these are options. Those are not things that we just move forward. The options are available for us. To I understand. I'm just bringing the option up that you had actually originally said. So that is an option for the commission to decide. If we wanted to stay at City Hall, bring permit and um, move out because you couldn't use the funds and make permanent licensing out further. Yeah, we mentioned that. Right, and okay. you actually said that. And you actually said a new, chamber, a new City Hall chamber for the commission, which could be used out of that new City Hall funds as well. Okay. And then the parking garage actually can be spent out of the new city hall funds, or maybe even permanent licensing because you're adding on to this building and you're not vacating, 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 can talk. <laughs> you're adding on and we're not moving somewhere else. Okay. So mm -hmm. Go ahead. that wasn't something you discussed, Mr. Feature? What I'm trying to get at is that every conversation I have are, is not about doing it that way. I said those are options. Right. And yeah. so I'm bringing it those up. Those are options. It was an option. Okay. It's an option that you might not think is the most beneficial option. Correct. Because feel free to yeah. say that. Right. Well, well I, I've, I've said that, but I, I get cut off. But the, the option is that could we build something in the parking lot? That's why you would have to have a garage because if you come here now, there's no parking. Correct. Right. So that's why the acquisition. I'm going by a garage. Yeah. The acquisition that's of a building is uh, it's, it's, it's something that we were going to recommend. Better, better to acquire a building than to build a garage. So if we use the funds to acquire a building, then this means that this is what we're committed to for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. Can we change gears? Let's say 10 years new commission, new organizational structure, and we decide, they decide, we want to use that building for something else. Or are we then committed to that space being permits and licensing into perpetuity? perpetuity? I think if you used it for 10 years, I think you would be fine. Yeah, that's what, and I think um, the attorney was looking at that, like, he, he's made it clear to us in many conversations that we shouldn't go buy a building and six months later turn it over. He's made that clear that it needs to be utilized for P&L for many years unless okay. a commissioner, commission 10 years from now decide they want to partner with, I'll just use the county and build a municipal complex where the courthouse is for three entities and we all go in there. Okay. Just like the marina, the last commission meeting, when I looked back at August 20, I mean August, April 5th, 2023, and looked and said in April 5th, 2025, he could go back in 30 days and change mm -hmm vacate permanent li licensing and we use that money out of the reserve <coughs> fund, yeah, we could get in trouble. Mm -hmm. That's why I asked to extend that for two years to 2027. Okay. Well, the operating... Hold, 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 hold. Do you have a response? I can, I can give you something by way of analogy that I think accurately reflects how you have to account for changing the use of, of, of things that you buy with the permits and licensing fund. Supposing you buy five vehicles for permits and licensing in year one, because you have new staff, and then you hit a recession, and you have to let all five of them go in year three. Well, now you have these five trucks that aren't in use by permits and licensing. 
and, and you happen to need them for another department. Okay. My understanding of the way the rules works is that when you transfer the use of those trucks to the other department, you have to then do a fund transfer okay. based on the current value of those trucks, which has been depreciated, into the permits and licensing okay. fund. To do the governmental accounting for Yes. It. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's stay on point now. So we got this particular item, the first one. Is there any problem with staff going out and looking for the acquisition of property that would be brought before us. I'd just like to know what, where the operating costs for this building, if it's purchased and built, where does that, it, it will still come out of P&L? Okay, it'll, it'll come out of the same way where it is now. Do you have another question? No, I'm just thinking that I don't know if we're gonna keep having all of this excess money and permits that's where my concern is at. And it's a valid concern. Well, it is a valid concern. But they do have, they do have a budget they have to work on as mm -hmm. well. So if we're getting, spending this down and we still have an excess money that we shouldn't have, then we need to go back and make an adjustment. Yeah. Yeah, we don't know when the market is going to turn, but mm. I think we have to operate somewhat according to where we are. So we're in agreement that if they bring it back, we will consider that. And the same is true with the renovation and remodeling of a new facility to accommodate the P&L expansion and renovation. No, that's something that he needs to look at because that's something that we might not be allowed to do. Is this an either or? Uh, it's, the question is, you have to renovate. If you get a, a building, you're saying that you don't think they can remodel the building? No, if you read the second part of that state statute, um, the renovation, am I correct on that? The statute, the statute with regard to excess funds specifically requires the expenditure to be on the construction of a new building. Construction. So it has to be construction, it can't be an old building. That's what the statute correct. says. Well then, we can't do that then. Okay. Uh, the, Expansion Attorney. and renovation. Can you um, correct can we, it? You have a rebuttal. Yeah. I, um, uh, you don't think that the Attorney General's office could give us an opinion on if we could utilize those funds to renovate a building if we purchase it? I can it? call Ashley Moody. Uh, I'm asking the Attorney. The language is very clear. Courts do not uh, get into interpretive issues when the language is clear. I, I suspect that JLAC and the Auditor General would approve this. And that's not a bad situation to be in. Uh, I, I just can't guarantee you that a court would defer to JLAC and the Auditor General's acceptance of, of these expenditures if, if we were to have a suit filed against us. To my knowledge, nobody's ever filed a suit against any city for the return of these funds. So uh, I, I also can't assess for you the risk that the city would be sued over. And more Daytona. All right, let's put a star by that when I'm not, um, you know, so the suggestion is that nobody's been sued before. To my knowledge. To your knowledge. Um, I'm not going to rule that out for me. Uh, does anyone else have a, where they're going to rule it out? I do, unless we have an opinion an we're opinion. not going to be sued. Yeah. Okay. Me too. Would do that, yeah. One, two, y'all, an opinion I'm that we'll be sued. Be sued. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, say that again? Opinion. You, they want an opinion from the no, Attorney General. No, I, I, I read the state statute an a, clear. An Attorney General opinion is not insulation from suit. Correct. No, nothing is. So, no. I, I, yeah. you can't do it. It's a state statute. I am not agreeing with it. Okay. You have two people that. Right. Well, have you asked else? everyone? <laughs> ask I'm everyone. just going by the law, and that's what it st states there. Mr. Mayor, ask everyone, please. I'd like to know who all would be, who's going to rule it out right off the bat. Because here's the bottom line. If they come back and say you had to pay the money back, all you'd have to do is put the money back in your fund. You'd have to transfer from a different source. You'd have to transfer source. the money to pay for it back, back into your own fund. You'd be paying yourself back the same money. It's not as though you're going to actually lose the money and you have to send it back to someone. 
I mean, you're proceeding in good faith yeah, yeah. based on, on, on past experience with JLAC and, and the Auditor General. So Sometimes you have to, you know, they've created a law and, and rules that we have to consider how we can best use this money. And if they come back and they say you got to use it another way, then we'll come back and use it another way. And that's the only penalty they come back that's and the only say penalty. correct it. Come back and okay. say you got to correct it. Okay. What's, what is also what, confusing to me, however, minute, is that... Saying, you're saying that's the only penalty? Is they're just going to say we have to pay that back? Pay it back to ourselves. Well, the, no. the, the, the court would require the city to spend the excess revenues the way that the statute directs. Mm -hmm. And if by then you'd spent them on a different source, you would have to, you know, reimburse the fund and then proceed to And what's expend the penalty them. the state will bring down on us? Well, if, if JLAC and the Auditor General uh, take action, then the, the risk to the city is that the city would stop receiving uh, their distribution of state revenues like sales tax until right. the city makes the correction. But, and again, I, I understand that you said we haven't received anything in writing from JLAC, but my understanding is that uh, they haven't made that move with other jurisdictions, and there there have been efforts in other jurisdictions to take steps like the ones you see here because uh, the uh, spending We're limits are so, so substantial. I, we'd have to Mr. find Gross. that out to verify, but that was what our external auditor told me. Okay, when I talked not, to her I, about that. I have looked at, all, uh, look at it, looked at it all, right. and that's not yeah, correct. And I, I'm just and telling actually, you what was explained I know to me. I believe it or not, I know Caruso myself. Right. <laughs> Well, I, I think even even if you proceeded to do what what the majority of the commissioners want to do and you don't, yeah, that's I, I would fine. still recommend yeah. that we cease doing that if we if we see the JLAC or the Auditor General are going to take action and suspend okay. state funds. I, I don't think that what you decide today ends any of this discussion, mm -hmm. right? Because even if you got a, a glowing letter of approval from JLAC, you then have to acquire property. Is there a property to acquire? Right. Within oh, well, that budgeted amount. And, I mean, Mr. Feature can come back and bring all this, but I know it's plain, it's clear what we can do. So, I mean, but bring it back because we're not proving it anyway today. So, okay. bring it back. Furnishes and equips new facility. Unless, does someone else have an opinion they want to opine on the second one? No one else? Okay. Furnishes and equips new facility. Yes. Yeah. IT media communication equipment of new facility. Yeah. We'll need IT setup rewiring of new facility. That's already been done. What, this already been done on this yeah. page? That's the marine, I think. It is. New yeah. lease, P&L, yeah, marino, marino, yeah, okay. Renovation. And, and is that how much the, it, we paid, 120000 Question. For the lease, for the marina, how much did we inquire for I think the lease? You all put up to to that with the, what was approved in the. Uh, that was that's what I'm asking. I can't you. remember what the actual number was. Because I know the renovation was a half a million. Okay, if someone is here that can look up what the last number was on that, just tell us so we'll know. Okay, renovation of P and L training facility. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we're saying the 120 is done? Yeah. That's done. Uh, yes. So what's the number? But I don't know the number. We don't know the number. Michael Stallworth, Business Enterprise Management Department Director. And yes, that is correct. They paid $10,000 a month for the lease. Okay. okay. So okay. that's 120. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, renovation of P&L training facility to assure structural stability and weatherproofing. Solicitation was released in December 2023. Okay. That says 750000 how much have we spent? Because on April 2023, it was a half a million dollars. I think we're at 540 yeah. or 535. Okay. So we're over? We're over? over. Yeah, 750,000. No, 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 we're not over. She we said 540. I mean, no, we're, we're under, 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 excuse yeah. me, I'm sorry, under. under so, so we have money left on there. It will be updated based on the expenditures. I don't think my staff has yeah. that just yeah, relatively yeah. available. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, acquisition of 11 Ford F 250s. Yeah, oh, it's P &L. 
This is for PNL. Due yeah. to scarcity and other market conditions, eight of the eleven vehicles were acquired in January to March. And they're gonna be riding nice. Okay, that's and done that's then. Take out. Okay. Which one is that? Acquisition a million dollars. Okay, we gotta take the mobile command out. Mm -hmm. I would have rather that. They don't even allow that. Acquisition of Marine Unit Staging Platform to be completed by December 2024. Can somebody explain that? Go ahead. Come on. Just to explain what's all involved in that, what will be there? Glenn Urquhart, Chief Building Official. So the, the staging platform is currently underneath the Seabreeze Bridge. Um, those dilapidated concrete docks. Um, that would be our staging area on the north side. So we uh, proposed to put in floating aluminum docks there, which would then replace the uh, dilapidated docks, serve two purposes. It would be the staging platform for ourselves, as well as give the public new facility at the same time. Hell yeah. But like, when, when we go to stage, if we pull up, we, and there's a public use in that because it's a shared purpose, we, we have to have the, uh, the several there as opposed to just one. So that's why we propose not just to replace one, we will replace them all. So when we come up and we're, the, the whole utilization of the training center and everything with over at the marina, that's um, as far as in conjunction with the boathouse that's being built. And this is being unification of police department, the fire department and permits and licensing with the three boats. So it's a project that has been worked on in the past for the past three years and it's now coming to fruition and coming all together so this is kind of like the tail end of what we've been in the process of doing that's why you got parts and pieces of it but when it all comes together it will be fire department police department and uh the, the building department the permits of license and over there with the three boats and you'll also have the training center that's there you know with it <laughs> okay okay I I actually love love it, wish we could, Me too. but we can't do it. Don't. <laughs> ben? Because of the because of the other three well, agencies. Mm -hmm. mm. But the, the, the but as far as the um the the, the, the boathouse, they, they have paid their percentage. Wait. So the fire department has paid as well as the police department. So they have a, what's the percentage the fire department and the police department has paid? I don't have I don't have the numbers on that, but I could get them to you. So if we take their percentages out the balance that's left if it's directed only to P and L, then can it we be. yeah, can we get that? Yes, yes, I can get that to you. And send it over to you and then well, it I, I would want to ask the CFO if that's an acceptable allocation method using the generally accepted accounting principles. Because I think that's what the test would be. Correct. Right, okay. Um, So that's an issue new to me. I will be honest with you. So, all this your name, is, so my name is Natalia Ekras, new CFO. I'm here for two months and 11 days. <laughs> so nice officially meeting you. So I'm listening to all of this, and I know it's a big issue. So two years in a row, we have this GLAC. Uh, the way I, Ben and I, and Mr. Feature, and we had a lot of conversation, a lot of meetings about this issue. I also had a conversation with our auditor, Ivan Claiborne, partner on the job. So all these listings were approved <coughs> by her prior to be sent to GLAC, the way <coughs> I understood. So when we look at these plans, the way I understand, and my position is such, that if we, each project, if we do estimation and our best justification why it would be used by p &L, with facts given at the time. So for <coughs> inception of each project, if we look at that, and we can justify why it's for use of PLN, <coughs> p &L only, to me it would be good enough. And that conversation I had with our auditor. Okay, do you have the percentage um, like they were we talking have to about calculate. the fire and the police? No, I don't, but we'll get it to you. So what I would do, um, we probably have to meet with p &L group again and go over each project in detail because we have not done that. 
I was presented that list being sent back in March of 2024, but I personally did not sit and look at each project and what way it is justification why PNL need that. And I believe that's what you're asking, Commissioner Country. Uh, oh, no, I'm asking for the percentage how much PNL, oh. how much the fire department, and mm -hmm. how much the police department. Right. And so we have to we sit down. do not get in trouble with this. All right. And I believe we have to do it because just the reserve fund specifically states, and you know as well as mm -hmm. I do, it can only be spent in permit and licensing. Exactly. Okay. So I think we need to do our homework, go through each project, again, justify between all the departments. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so Three. that one, did we put a question mark? We can put a question mark where you guys go back and uh, just get the percentage and get the percentage. <coughs> Drew? Uh, Drew Driscoll, Deputy City Manager and Fire Chief. I do want to just mention for reference that the fire department does enforce, enforce the Florida Building Code, yeah. the International Life Safety Code. That's why we provide fire inspectors. That's why Glenn also has fire inspectors. So that is fire department's involvement is an allowable expenditure for that purpose. Mm -hmm. That's okay. good to know. That's good to know. That's good information. Okay. okay. Renovation of PL Enforcement Board of Building Codes facility to be completed by December 2024. That's already being done. Um, rehabilitation of existing PL office space. But I do have a question on that because we have 750,000 up there and then we have 250,000 down here. Ain't that the same thing? What, oh, am I sorry, wrong? No. The 750 is for staging platform, right? No, I think that, not that same. I'm talking up further. Renovation, you're, you're talking, oh, yeah. renovation of PL training facility. To assure structural stability yeah. and weather. And then, where were two we? Different things. Come back down to renovation of P&L and which both of them were already being done which can we get that because what I saw was a half a million dollars what were you asking can we get what a copy of how much it's actually costing because it's already being done because this is seven eight nine that's a million dollars. And what I seen that we approved was a half a million dollars. Yeah. No, no, I'm, I'm not understanding. Okay, the renovation for the marina. Hmm. Is that where the training facility is? Correct. That's what she's talking about, okay. the seven. So okay. what I saw okay. was a half a million dollars. And if you add both of those, you're looking at a million dollars now. How do you get to a million dollars? Yeah. Because 750000 up there, April 3rd, 2024, for the renovation, and then we have 250000 renovation if I can. enforcement board and building. Oh, wait a minute. So, building oh, Coast facility so to Commissioner, I think the combined cost for the training facility is are the first two items listed on page three of four of the uh, March 25th report. It's the lease and, and the renovation. That's a total of... Of, uh, of 870 and I think uh, when you uh, continue on down that list uh, to the renovation of the P&L enforcement slash Board of Building Codes facility I, I think all three of those items that are listed the 250 the 125 and the 600 I assume are, are for planned renovations in City Hall for space that, that the P&L uh, occupies it, it could be the chambers as well Okay, use which, first okay, so all chambers. those three yeah. are for... It could be the okay. chambers upstairs. But that's where... Are we allowed to do that? Because I was told you can't do that. If, to the extent that the, that the facilities are used uh, for permit and licensing activities, and we, you and I had a conversation about this the yes. other day, that includes code enforcement, which includes a lot of building code right, enforcement. And they all meet up at the chamber. It includes the... the uh, the um, the board of building codes that reviews condemnation of buildings, um, and so uh, and the magistrate as well. Mm -hmm. So I, I can't tell you how those costs would need to be allocated between those uses and other users. So it had to be a percentage. 
uh, again, I, I would I would defer to the uh, people who are expert in interpreting GAP and GASB. So that's what we would need to find out on all this. And who are those people that are the experts in? The, the, the accountants. Our accountants. Our accountants, CFOs that said we can utilize these but because they. Outside of the code. Yeah. And our auditor. No, uh, the, the, yeah. the internal. Our, our, our internal accounting internal and our auditor. outside uh, auditor. Auditor. Okay. So that means we're down to addition staff because all the rest of it, they would have to determine that. And so given that we have such a huge explosion of permits being issued and licensing and <clears throat> building code and issues of enforcement, why are we only, we have a building code enforcement liaison person, but we're not actually hiring any extra building code enforcement officers? Or is that the same? We're only doing one, right? Or is it not? Because they're not code officers. It's the liaison component. Right. But do we, can we get code officers with this funding? I don't think it, if, well, if you, I, I don't know how we divvy up the code inspection workforce, but I imagine that many code inspectors, when they're going to a site, are finding both building code and international property maintenance code violations as well as land development code violations. Okay. So, so if they're there and they're performing that work in a uniform manner, I, I think you could, and, and again, I defer to an accountant, I mm -hmm. think you probably could allocate the cost of that inspector to, um, mm -hmm to the building code enforcement. But if on the other hand, we segregate building code enforcement officers here and land development code officers there, then and you're talking about hiring somebody to do land development code enforcement, then I don't think you can charge any of that cost toward it. I, it would depend to some extent on how, how we have them working currently. <coughs> so the 750, 250, 125, and 600 are all together to consideration? Correct. Is that what we said? I don't think the 750 is. I think the 250, 125, 600. Okay, we good on the staging. Oh, okay. no, that's the one. He, yeah, that's the one he needs to determine the percentage. Well, she needs to de uh, determine the percentage with the fire department and the police department. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, We'll give you some time, but you need to get to work on that. Mm -hmm. We don't come Okay. Um, all right, final addition of staff. Is this a question expenditure in any way? That's what we're going to look at, too, your those funds. Based on, the, the, on, uh, based on the, the description of the personnel I've heard at tonight's meeting, I don't think that's an issue. What was reported is that all of these uh, personnel are, are involved in the... Uh, enforcement of the building code or one of the codes that are adopted along with the building code like the international property maintenance code. Okay. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Can we include the rental license mm -hmm. person? Because we have a lot of residential yeah. uh, hmm? permitting and I don't think we have enough staff for that. <laughs> That's important. So our rental licensing program is a local code program. It's not a building code program. Uh, but they do check for safety of buildings, correct? They do, they do review for building code enforcement, so that might have to require an allocation as well. Again, I, I, would, I, I think your accounting staff and, and outside auditor would need to understand what percentage of the work is involved in what yeah, enforcement of what code? So somebody will look into it. Yeah. Okay. And also and the waiving of fees for permitting fees <coughs> citywide. We also, when they come back, we're going to talk about um, because we're approving all this already. Well, we've already approved it at the marina, and then looking at property for a new for permit and licensing. And they're, they're just going to be separate. I mean, are we going to discuss this later? And then what happens to that building? Uh, I'm missing. I didn't follow you. Okay. The building that we already approved, that we're spending more money on, 
and then we're going to look for property for permanent licensing. Okay. What are we planning on doing? Are we got, remember we talked just a few minutes ago, said they should be together. If we're going to be we're trained, doing training. Yeah, and yeah, we'll be bringing something back to you. I mean. You're going to bring something back. And we're, we're hearing about not moving that forward as fast as we could. We're mm -hmm. hearing you now. But we're already and so we'll approving talk money for that over there. Do you get what I'm saying? Very well. Okay. But in the interim, do they need a place where they could do this training? I'm sorry? I said in the interim, they still need a place to do the training. Right. So even well, what we were talking about, if we're doing something separate there, are they going to do training there? And then we're going to have another building for permanent licensing. I mean, that's something, I guess, that needs to be discussed. Is the space big enough to incorporate this into what you have? It depends on which, which location we go after. Right now, we need places for training. That's what I think Commissioner Paris was just saying. We don't have the space now for that. A lot of times we're using this room, waiting for areas, using a small room upstairs for different trainings. So it is a training facility we need. The building may get purchased, but it may be six months to a year, you're going to have to build one. So we still need training right now. But what's, we're, this, have to pay for? But what's the square footage on that building at the marina that we're using I, right now? I, I don't that have, we're constructing for training? Commissioner, I don't have those numbers right off the top of my, okay. my head. Can we get the square footage on that? I'm just curious because we do have a lot of facilities with meeting rooms. Um, actually, we just approved for the fire department a meeting room over there, too. Um, well, we'll for the new fire department. That's two years out. We did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? Okay. So that's what I'm trying to find out, the square footage over there and how big that room is going to be over at the marina. So maybe when you're looking for property, you can actually figure that into it. Well, I, I think I think we made some ground. I'm going to stop at that. We made some ground. We know some of the things, and then we know what our questions are. Um, how long before you can come back with some answers to these questions? They will be relatively quick because we want to give a report back to JLAC and an expenditure. So I'm hoping that you'll get something hard copies to you all within the next two Do weeks. Do we have a deadline for JLAC to respond back? Well, we don't have to respond back to JLAC now. We've already responded okay. to the previous two years. These are back that we need to be able to tell them how we're going to spend $11 million. And then we need to start spending the money. Correct. I, okay. By yes. when? This October? October, yeah. October 2024? Yes. One of the things we're going to be asking, however, is because it, I think um, Attorney um, Gross also realized there is no penalty that says um, what takes place if you don't mm. spend it. Do we get another JLAC letter saying you've got to spend it within two years, so we're trying to determine, we're going to be reaching out to JLAC, to the office to figure out, can we put things in place that says you have to spend it, or can it be allocated? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, for future spending? Yes. Okay. So, I just have to know, because I, my curiosity abounds at this point, the 175, what is the base and what is, I just cannot get over that number, I'm sorry, I cannot get over that number that it's 175,000 for a fire inspector and 175000 for building code enforcement liaison person. I'm just dying to know what is yeah. the base, what is the benefit, yeah. how um, does that work? Mr. Sexton, I, um, could you tell us the base salary? Yeah, because please. The base salary, if we were to, because I think that maybe the commissioner is thinking that the 175 is... is no, I, I'm, it, I'm trying to break it yeah. apart. So I want I you to break the base right. salaries range just from your that's, recollection. That's a great and what's all involved with benefits? Yeah, if you're looking at somewhere between Jim Sexton, Human Resources Director, if you're looking to pay somebody between 80 and six figures, 100,000, that's your base, and you're going to throw 13.57 on that FRS, 7.5 FICA, your health insurance. Um, I don't know what other costs they may have rolled in that. It might be their office space. It might be uniforms. You know, all the things that you would need to hire an employee, workstation, you know, IT equipment, so et cetera. Is that, the, is that the industry standard right now in the state of Florida? Is 80 to 100,000 for that position? Well, potentially, if it's a high level administrator position. And then, like 
when we were trying to recruit two years ago, we were looking at for a development engineer, and we just couldn't get anybody. Mainly because of our salary range is low, and government we're paying around <laughs> one ten for between ninety and one hundred and ten for engineers, and uh, we lost one for two hundred and thirty k not too long ago, a couple years back. So, when when you're talking about these high level positions, it's an employee's market right now, and they're kind of naming prices, but that's that's kind of what we're doing at the end of the day. And then it's just like, again, you know, all the uh, ancillary costs of providing the fringe benefits of being uh, working for a great employer like the city of Daytona Beach. All right, thank you. And then when they come back, are we all in agreement that we will consider thank you for acknowledging um, the fees being waived across the city? Are we all in favor of that? Mm -hmm. What was that? The fees, fees being waived to permitting fees. So I, I don't see why we can start that now. We're working on an agenda. Did item. we say that included developers or not? Yeah, that's everybody. Everybody. It's going to have to be. No, I mean, I already asked that it's, question. It's, it's, no, you're not talking about a reimbursement. You're talking about a waiver. Waiving the fees. Whoever comes in to pay the fees. Not anybody that's about. previously. Yeah. Well, I'm more interested in affordable, not incentivizing that. I don't know about development. I mean, developers so, are the ones building. I'm talking about just. Lincoln. So, what's, what's the difference in affordable? You, you know, we, 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 we're suffering with uh, some of this growth. Mm. I, Let's I, not I, fool ourselves that yeah. we, mm -hmm. we just can, that it just pays for itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm saying individuals too, that has to replace the roofs or mm -hmm. windows, I mean, from the insurance rates that, uh -huh. you know. But you're say, he was saying, when I brought that up, uh, Mr. Feature was saying that it wouldn't spend enough. But if we're coming back to look at this, why can't we start that now for certain things? Well, we can. And come I'm, back and look at it. I'm not saying we can't, but I'm saying we're having to have a conversation right now about, you know, you can bring it back, but my, my biggest interest is, is in how do we incentivize the affordable I mean, I know it's money there. There was a reason that your last city manager really wanted to build the city hall. That's a lot of money <coughs> that was generated from the permits and license. And a lot of it was gonna be earmarked towards helping to build a, a new city hall. Um, <coughs> so, just we'll bring it back. Bring it back. So yeah, let's move on right, to, so to the next thing. I'm going to bring it back. Go bring it back for you to I discuss know, it. Air, okay. What are you talking about earmarked for the new city hall? I'm this, saying he wanted to build a new city hall in large part. A lot of right, his money was going to be. Right, but he could have done this with. He could have done some of it. Just for permanent licensing. Yeah. <coughs> home, that's he it. just made it a Taj Mahal. That's, that's, for permanent that's licensing. Yeah. No, wait. We would have rented it. Uh, we would have rented twice a month. Yeah. We would have used our own building. Yeah. But can't we do something now for people um, waiving permits right now for roofs, um, new businesses coming in? He's, that's what he said. He's going to bring that back. Back in an agenda yeah, item? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I think immediately for it, um, like especially, for, especially for residents. Mm -hmm. Let's just wipe out residents. Right. No residents should be paying by the next meeting for to put a roof on their property. I don't have to do two readings. But I mean, that's what I mean after that. <laughs> yeah. No, no residents I'll get with you. I'm not. I'm not going with the developers though. New businesses, uh, restaurants, whatever, uh, for permits. Yeah. Can we make anything retroactive for 2024? Mm -hmm. Can you speak up a little? Can we make anything retroactive for whatever took place in 2024? We're six months. No, into we the can't do that. Yeah. We can't go back and give them their money back. We have to give them money back. <laughs> no, we'd have to give them the money back. Can't what do I that. Asked. Yeah. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. Nothing okay. Nothing but a try. No, no. Okay, let's move on with the project updates. I still, I want to hear. It. Okay. And I uh, sure. So we got the um, um, Drew Jackie Robinson ballpark and the fire station. Um, please make it as quick as possible <laughs> for your updates. Again, Drew Driscoll, Deputy City Manager and Fire Chief. Uh, as we mentioned, preserving the legacy of Jackie Robson and the history of professional baseball in Daytona Beach. 
Uh, this project is one of renewal and enhancement, ensuring that the ballpark's continued community importance for many years to come. Although staff is currently in the process of finishing up contract negotiations, the tentatively awarded design builder has been proactively moving forward to keep us on track with the construction deadline. Once the contract is approved at the July 3rd City Commission meeting, once you consider approving it, I should say, I would anticipate the project two to accelerate quickly, which is saying something given that we have met at least twice a week um, for the past two months with the, de the tentative design builder firm. Um, in a few months, we're planning on hosting a design show and tell uh, to solicit design feedback from yourselves and the community at large. The designer is uh, well aware of the previous feedback that they received um, and the current preliminary design is to seamlessly blend the old historic grandstand structure so the whole venue looks seamlessly with the historic appearance, uh, utilizing similar uh, materials that are, currently exist. Prior to the year, end of the year uh, Tortuga season, we'll host a groundbreaking ceremony at the beginning of one of the Tortugas home games to help ensure that the community and their fan base are part of this historic project from the beginning. Uh, this project is planned to take place in two phases. Phase one, is, as you may recall, is the Major League Baseball standard facility standards, and phase two are the fan amenities and other improvements throughout the stadium. For estimated schedule that we're working on right now is July 24. Uh, we hope to have a schematic design complete for show and tell. August 24, design development. October of 2024, uh, construction documents, at least for phase one. November 2024, uh, GMP approval, the guaranteed maximum price coming to the commission for your approval. December 2025, ribbon cutting for phase one. Uh, as if you may recall, we have a contractual obligation with the Tortugas to be compliant with December 2025. In September of 2025, just previous to that, phase two construction would begin during the off season and with the hopes of a March 2026 ribbon cutting for phase two. Are there any questions regarding Jackie Robson ballpark? I don't recall the design, but does that include their office space on the, by City Island Rec Center? Their office space would be moved into the new clubhouse facility. So what would happen to that building? Because we they have the opportunity to present a, um, a proposal for a co consideration, and if we choose not to go forward, it remains our property to do something else with. So only two. Also, I just want to let you know the reports that are being given here, we will have these typed up also and sent out back in the minute so you have the information as well. Only two phases in completion. Yes, ma'am. That's the current projection. So then we would theoretically have two vacant buildings on that piece of property, on that spit of land. Yes, which okay. gives us some opportunity. Any other Jackie Robson related questions? For the fire station headquarters on March 19th of 1925, the current fire station opened for service. The project being discussed today is for the construction of a new fire station number one and administrative headquarters. I'm happy to say that today at 1.30 we received the 100% construction documents for that building. Uh, the facility is intended to serve as a model for the city's future as we focus on environmental efficiency, community engagement, employee health and safety, and beautification of our historic corridors. The next step will be the development of the guaranteed maximum price, uh, which will be brought forward to City Commission for your approval. Once all subcontractors are under contract, we anticipate breaking ground September of 2024, followed by vertical construction be beginning before the end of the year. Unfortunately, you'll probably only see an elevator shaft before the end of the year, but it is vertical and I'll celebrate that. Um, you should see me, I go around and play in the dirt over there. I'm, I'm excited about this one. Uh, the current schedule has, um, has our move-in listed as February of 2026. If it is the city's commission's direction, we anticipate being in the position to release a request for a proposal for the current fire station in the last quarter of 2025. 
This should offer sufficient time for a review of proposals, plan development, contract negotiation with the attempt or intent of minimizing the length of time that the building goes vacant. For the fire station project, I do have to say thank you to all my fire department members. Uh, I know this is going on longer than you want. Um, but within programming, we really tried to do a group effort. So we assigned a programming committee and they went out and talked to the members of the fire department. We put out surveys, uh, just trying to make this the building that it needs to be um, for the next hundred years. Um, and then of course, I wanna thank city staff because between legal, finance, purchasing, IT, uh, building officials office, and of course, the lead of the project, Public Works, um, it takes a lot of hands to move a project like this forward, and I just want to say thank you. Are there any questions about the fire station? No question, but Drew, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about it as well. Um, oh, I had something on my mind. I'm having a, mm, a brain moment. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, sugar. Mm. I'll get back. Oh, I wanted to say, um, I'm glad to hear that we're keeping Fire Station 1. We're asking for RFPs to do something with it. Well, it, not that I have any control over here whatsoever, by the way. I'm just a humble employee. Uh, but I think you'd see me and several other people chained against that building if anyone tried to tear that yeah, down. I'm glad. Yeah. yeah. It's historic. We yes, need to keep it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Jeff Brown for the Corbin Building Update. Jeff Brown, Economic and Strategic Opportunities Director. Uh, negotiations for the uh, Corbin Building, 777 Main Street, are still ongoing. Um, we've had uh, several conversations over the last couple of months. Um, I just heard that uh, Andrew, the, the uh, RFP res respondent, just had a kid, so I'm giving him two weeks to enjoy that time and we'll be back in touch with his uh, local council um, brought uh, Mr. Ferguson with Cobb Cole uh, to r start those negotiations going forward and continue with it and hopefully by the end of summer we'll be able to bring you something to consider. Okay. Any questions? I can't remember which one's next. Uh, it's, it's up here for the Bike Week Master Plan. All right, so Bike Week Master Plan. Um, two things. One, for Biketoberfest, uh, we went to an all-digital um, application for those that participate within Bike Week. So Hassam and Rose really put a lot of time and effort into the program. Um, you'll see the benefit of that, uh, pro uh, that <coughs> program uh, when we bring forward the uh, bike Biketoberfest um, applicants. I think there's only three that are outstanding that have some issues that we're still working through as opposed to several that we usually have had in the past. Um, everybody, we, we did two training sessions um, with the applicants themselves and then hosted two sessions, one in the afternoon and one in the morning at the Cherry Center to help those that needed help or didn't have computer access to get their information uh, into the system. Um, we're also looking at the potentially moving forward that those that um, as part of the application have to have a site plan to be able to roll that site plan uh, from the previous event to the next event so they're not having to reproduce those every time. Um, the guidelines are also under review at staff level. Um, I just got them back from the attorney today um, we may be changing some things as well within the Bike Week Master uh, master Plan in an attempt to try to make it easier for not only the itinerant vendors but also the uh, participant landowners in, the, um, in those districts where we have Bike Week. So hopefully we'll have those to you also here shortly. Also, you are, we are looking at, at the request of the Commission, different elements that deal with parking. That is correct. I just want to say thank you because I, I attended one of those trainings as well mm -hmm. and I've gotten a lot of good feedback good. from the merchants and yeah and it's very a lot more sim simple than it was. So. Yes, so oftentimes at commission we have people come up saying I didn't know ABCD. Um, 
do you happen to know like what pop, what percentage of people came and took the trainings? Um, I know when we percentage that, that we know percentage. we're going to apply, and there's a percentage yeah. who they don't do it, and they come at the week of. So do we catch some of those too? So I'll tell you, the April 26th, and I think we even extended it to May 8th was our deadline. Um, everybody was in the system. Um, we only had one that came like two weeks later um, because it was handled out of their corporate office, one of the applicants. Um, so they will be in the packet. They were late. They're getting all their information in. Um, but we will also push them through and present them to you in, in a couple of weeks. All right. Uh, next thing is the uh, 600 acres on yeah. West ISB. Um, we, um, y'all, y'all gave a contract to sports facilities uh, consultants. Actually, it's one of their subsidiaries, which is Sports Facilities Advisory. Um, we have a coordinating committee of Keith, David, um, Brandon Little with the uh, CBB, uh, Janet Kersey with the Chamber. And one other person. Oh, Vince and Terry. I'm sorry. Um, those five people are, are on the steering committee um, to work to assist in, in getting information to the consultant when they ask uh, for some information and also get feedback on the proposals. Uh, we held two public open public meetings, um, one at the end of April, one in the middle of May. Um, we also held uh, two days worth of stakeholder meetings um, here locally um, that was attended by uh, Bethune-Cookman, Emory Riddle, um, I think we had somebody from the school board as well. Um, I think one of the Little Leagues, a couple of the Little Leagues also were there of the youth sports. Um, and then also they had a website that we heavily um, advertised to receive public input uh, as, a, as a survey, um, that heck, we got over 300 responses back to that online survey. They took all the information that we had presented to them, the stakeholders had presented to them. Um, they have sent back to us um, three potential models of what could be developed on the site. Um, staff is reviewing them right now. We have a meeting later on this week to discuss those models and uh, decide what we want to present forward to y'all. Um, right now it is just cost estimates of construction. It does not include any, any potential revenues that we can generate with the site uh, with tournaments coming on board to the facility as well. So um, we're still act looking towards the end of the summer also for this program to be completed and a presentation made. I just, I just have a quick question on the yes, Corbin building. We only received one RFP. Is was there a reason for that? I mean, because when that was presented oh. to us, is like everybody oh, back to was seven, gonna seven. come. Okay. Um, no, I, it's it's a rather large building. It's what, forty thousand square feet. I know, but feet. when the presentation, when we received the presentation, it was like this is like the best thing. <laughs> Correct. Apple pie. Yes. And I mean, we had so many people that were going to, you know, and it just, it's been a long time. Correct. Yeah, and, and I realize that, and I'm, I'm hoping, like I said, I hope we can get our the negotiations done um, and completed uh, by this summer. What, what you had, um, um, Mr. Brown, I think is you had individuals that came, looked at the facility, and realize that the magnitude of the facility. So you may only have one person that submitted. <clears throat> it was because they thought they could do the project. However, we did have other individuals oh, yeah. that came. So that's what I think the yes. question. Yeah, from. I mean there were several people interested in it. But when you start talking about twenty thousand downstairs and twenty thousand upstairs, uh, I think the people then were less inclined uh, to want to take on that project. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Waller, um, you're, you're up first with Parks and Recreation Master Plan. Uh, good evening, David Waller, Public Works Director. 
Uh, the Parks and Rec Master Plan, we're, uh, we're well underway. We're over halfway. Uh, we kicked off our uh, per first public meeting tonight. It's, it's exactly at this time. <laughs> um, hopefully an indication of interest. Our first person showed up at 5.30 for a meeting that starts at 6. And we had two more folks show up about 10 minutes later. So I, either they can't read a clock or they're just super excited when we get there first. So um, we're going to, we have uh, mailers that are going out, should go out, uh, I expect next week, send out 4,000 surveys by mail with the expectation to get at least 400 back. It's a statistical snapshot randomly addressed out to 4,000 folks. If we don't get 400, we'll send out another 1,000 until we get at least 400 back. Uh, there is an online survey out. It's available right now. Um, it's on our website. There's a link to it. Um, we've had some traffic before our first meeting, which is pretty exciting. We've had about 60 people fill out the online survey. Uh, we expect that to go up dramatically after the meeting starts tonight. Um, we're expecting a final report back in November, which has been our original schedule, which will put together a 10, 15, 20 year kind of master outlook on your city facilities for recreation and other activity type buildings and will help guide good decisions or good information for you guys to make decisions on where you want to make investments to improve our recreational facilities and our offerings um, for our residents. Um, it's bigger than facilities. I talk about about facilities because I'm the maintenance and construction person, but really the big apple of this is it'll provide feedback for Keith and how they can provide additional programming that the community wants beyond what they're doing now. It'll highlight um, where their users are happy, where they'd like to see additional programming, and it provides back to you guys if you want to add this program Keith needs this number of people and this much funding, so it it's, has a cause and effect side to the uh, end product, so that you know that if you want to start a, you know, a, a senior program at this facility, he needs three staff persons and X amount a year or whatever it is. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the program inside, but <laughs> we hired a great team that's going to give you that information, and uh, look forward to the report. Yeah. Next is your volleyball and tennis at City Island. All right, we'll kind of break that in a couple little pieces. Ten tennis is being, uh, the, you know, the City Island tennis courts were heavily damaged in Hurricane Nicole. Uh, we hired a consultant, Thompson Consulting, to help us prepare what we call an alternate project with FEMA because of how we think we want to handle that, the damages that were done there. Last commission, I believe you all have approved their continued services to manage the what we call the alternate project and, and uh, two, two reasons for the alternate project. Um, big part of it is, is uh, Jackie Robinson's improvements are going to sit on that spot. So really we're kind of, we've got a little mixed blessing. The courts were damaged. Uh, our estimate is $1.4 million in damage to those courts to put them back in a playable condition. Um, FEMA will give us 80 set between FEMA and the state 87 and a half percent of that round numbers about 1.2 million dollars will be available to the city to build an alternative recreational facility it doesn't necessarily mean tennis I think the conversations generally have been tennis but you can build anything that you think will serve your community better at a location of your choice and uh, we'll be bringing some options back through for your considerations and I think that's an important decision for us to make and how we want to expend those funds um, to provide opportunities for our residents on this we have looked a few times over the last couple years and uh, pretty recently at additional um, volleyball courts on City Island um, we looked at a location immediately adjacent so it'd be two courts it's a very heavily used facility I think the last time we kind of talked about it we priced it up a little bit and then really kind of leaning leaning in my opinion that we're very close to the having this master plan product um, from from this report that we've been working hard on, and um, you know, and it'll, it, one of the items it'll do is detail where deficiencies are in your programming, and City Island, of course, is on that list of, of places that we'll look at the feedback from from our our residents and from from y'all and from the online surveys and and see uh, if those are good choices to be made. And then, uh, really, I think we'll have a follow-up after this product is out and all you guys have had a chance to look at it and uh, we can decide on capital programs moving forward. And one note I've failed to mention in the, on the Parks and Rec, 
the, the commission were looking at setting meetings in July for your feedback. We wanted to get the resident feedback from these first so we can give you a little pre-digest of what that is so you have an idea of what's being said at the meetings by your constituents and then, and then you can provide feedback with that information. We want to let the residents go first so you have their information that will come to you in July. So, here we go. You got any questions about those couple items? I don't have a question. I have a statement. Zone, zone four, I keep getting a lot of emails about pickleball. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we, we, I, I expect you're going to see in the feedback we get from, from the surveys we're doing, pickleball um, citywide as being an item of interest now west. Is uh, we've, we've got that feedback um, has been solicited to us as well. Um, the, and the tennis uh, pro would love to see pickleball added to his facility because it'll add users to, to his facility that he can't get now. Right. Um, you know, there's some, a lot of his tennis players are, are aging right. and they and like the pickleball model. So, Margaritaville. <laughs> yeah, I know we, one of the, Mary. one of the, Couple of residents from Margaritaville were in the in the city. Oh, yeah, um, I get email constantly because uh, they have to go to Holly Hill Academy, <laughs> Citizens <laughs> Academy, <laughs> and they they shared that opinion while they were there. Hey, thank you. Well. Thomas, redevelopment um, regarding the um, next steps in our housing trust fund. Um, it's, we have a four-step process, and our first step, um, getting to um, at least bringing back a, a housing um, trust fund ordinance, um, first we're going to uh, identify some sources of revenue um, dedicated um, toward this, this housing trust fund outside of um, public, um, the public entity. So we would be looking for private funding to um, support the housing trust fund. Um, and that would be including a written report of the funding sources that we're going to recommend. And the second step will include um, recommendations on program structure, um, fund management, who's going to manage the fund. Will, it, will we have to um, bring in a, um, a fund manager, um, a community development finance um, institution, which uh, refers to as a CDFI, um, or the, um, the Volusia County has a housing finance authority of Volusia County. You can appropriate the money there, um, and individuals have to apply for the money there, or we could bring the money in-house to as well, the trust fund in-house. Um, and the final version of the housing trust fund that we want to bring back as a recommendation um, will be the ordinance itself, um, and we'll have some community meetings um, briefly um, before we bring it back. We'll have some workshops so we can talk about um, the effects and um, the issues and concerns um, and the needs for the housing trust fund itself and um, after that meeting we will certainly present this ordinance draft ordinance to the mayor and the commissioner which group are we um, Florida Housing Corporation is who we're going to work with for yes the Florida Housing Corporation has presented a proposal to us um, to um, follow those steps that I just um, indicated um, and hopefully um, they're proposing an eight month uh, process, but we're looking at somewhere between um, maybe five to six months to, to pull this process to, together. That was my question. What was your timeline? How long you say? Six. Well, they propose an eight months. Months. But we're going to put trust down. down we're we're recommending to create a trust fund earlier before the, within putting money in ourselves. And when are we going to have the presentation from the county? They haven't given me a date. Um, Suzanne Cochin she hasn't given me a date for the, the group coming, but the Ann is going to probably do the presentation. Is her name Ann? Ann, yes. Ann. They're um, going to ask um, her to do the. Um, they're going to ask her to do the presentation as a former chair. I think Jessica Gao was part of that as well. She was. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> we'll be quiet. <laughs> No, but the money is not. We put money in this year's budget for our own trust. We did have one one addition for this before we ask for your top three priorities. The the city has a facility at the marina, um, which you all have been talking about for a city banquet facility. Um, it's currently at the marina. It hasn't been used for approximately 10 years. That staff has looked at Mr. Waller, 
uh, with Parks and Rec has looked at. You all have been talking about building one. We're going to be bringing something back to you all on a property that the city currently owns that some of you have, have, I know, have been in that building before that is going to be brought back to you all for rentals that has been sitting vacant for, I think, David and Michael said about 10 years fully. It make no sense. Yeah. So, so here's the thing. As I have to say, we have all these buildings that we build, buildings that we have, and then after a period of time, they just sit yeah. vacant, but we're still left supporting the building, yeah. maintaining the building. And, you know, earlier we were talking about, I think what we were alluding to, was that we have all these buildings and all these rooms that we already have that we don't utilize. Yeah. And it's just one more expense on top of, on top. And, I and get then that, we go to renovate yeah. <laughs> and something I mean, we don't I understand own. that we want to be in vogue. I understand that we want to provide kind of a new asset yeah, every so often to yeah, just so give us a, a facelift. Yeah. But it seems like a, a waste, oftentimes. Peninsula building was left empty for a long time, and it's only used as Peninsula Club at certain times, right? So it's interesting that we have these assets, but we don't utilize them yeah. efficiently. I agree. It's just I a waste. Agree with this. Wait, is I the mean, Peninsula Club not getting used a yeah, lot? It's been I mean, used that's, to be really that's used. an example. That's one example. Okay. That's an example that I can think of because I live right there. Oh. So I can see when there are events. But my point, utilization to me is not just, and we have a rental. It's and we're having meetings in the building and we're using it for other types of activities that maybe we cannot do at City Hall, but maybe we can utilize the space somewhere else. That to me is the use of a building when we're already paying for air and power. Like land That's all. Can we get a list of all the buildings oh, and yeah, we, if we're using them? Oh yeah, we have it. Yeah, we actually so, have a facility. So Dickinson okay. is a, a space, Cherry Center is a space, the Mont Peninsula Scarlet Center. Golden. Right, there's spaces, and they are utilized. They're utilized throughout the day. There's programs, events, activities going on all the day. Good use of resources. And then we have other properties. The marina. <coughs> that should be prime real estate for something. It should be prime. It's on the river. It's got access, boat access. I always envision thriving restaurants there, but it can never make a go of it for whatever reason. We gonna make it go. So there you have it. We gonna do it. Okay. So that, that's it on that. And so we asked yeah, you. Who asked for the list? I would like a yeah. list of. Yeah, yeah. Commissioner. You did? Yeah. 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 Would you send all of us the oh, yeah. list of all we of our. We actually have um, a, 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 a very facilities list with all of what needs to be done on them also. Okay, like Andy and his team and David did some time of all of the improvements that need to be made. I think I have it on electronically. Yeah. And all the property yeah. that we are already using as well that yeah. we own. Yeah. Okay. And I think just for the record that when any one commissioner asks for something, mm -hmm. that you should give it to all of us. They we shouldn't that. have to ask you. And I think you, you do that. So we asked uh, at the beginning of the session last year, your top three priorities centered around affordable housing, um, infrastructure for roads, transportation, and also for activities. And we're trying to see if you all want to change from those um, priorities as we go into this upcoming year um, of focusing on affordable housing, um, continuing infrastructure improvements for roads, um, sidewalks, and also programming at our facilities for youth and seniors. And so far from what we've been told, it seems as though we're doing a lot of programming, but do we have a barometer, a scale, a metric that says, you know, we are doing this much more than we did before to say that we actually met our goals. Yeah, I, I think we, we do have some of that information. I, I'll use the priority of Commissioner Cantu is working for reference to our swimming program, and they saw how many, the improvement of how many people were uh, participating in our, our swimming programs and trainings over the past couple of years, and that's why we've received, I, I don't know how much we 30,000. 30,000 additional dollars because they said we can train. Oh, 35 train more people for swimming. So we can, we, we can pull out from our, especially our parks and rec, how many improvements we've made in reference to classes offered, programs offered, mm -hmm. that we, we can share that information. Can you include the number of attendees? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I got another phone call regarding our, our cancellation of line dancing on the Monday, Wednesday, Fridays at 3. Now, when I originally wrote, I only asked about Fridays because that's when I go. <laughs> But I worked the other two days, so I didn't know it was affecting people that greatly. But the senior that called was saying that they need that movement. That, um, and I told him my building's under renovation, which is why the, um, the Mikhail Brown room is, is not being utilized. And we're 
doing something with the bathrooms or what have you. I read what staff wrote, but it would be nice to be able to, to continue that so that the, the seniors can continue to move. So, so for example, in building utilization, for example, they can't do it there, but do we have another building that that's building really street block mm -hmm. that they're willing to we, go to? And we right? offer, I think, um, um, Mr. Willis and Mr. Terry, we offer other locations and similar to like the Peninsula Club for people. However, one of the biggest issues we have is that some of the people that are teaching mm -hmm. the, um, um, some of the line dancing, mm -hmm. during the summers they're in charge of our kids' camps. Is that what it is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not, and so that person that we paid to, to run summer camp, only they can't just run line dancing. line dancing. And so we take these two months off mm -hmm. because they're assigned to do line dancing with students through other things, training, running programs. That's what their official job was for when they were hired. Hmm. Go to video training. Pop up a video of the line dancing so they can still follow it. And if we have a building that has the capability for that. Yeah, if they work with us, um, contact um, Mr. Willis or Mr. Terry. We can work when we have individuals who we've made sure that we have a, a structure. At Senior Oasis, they, they stop operating for two months mm -hmm. out of the summer to make sure that, because we can't background check every person that comes in, and we want to make sure that the students, we don't have to do the background checks for every visitor that wants to come into our area. Mm -hmm. So we provide the Peninsula Club. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's start with our uh, three top priorities. I personally think we can take sidewalks and roads off as long as we all agree that we should improve the budget and keep going. Mm -hmm. You already know what we want to do. It's, it's going great. It's definitely resonating it. <laughs> with the great. voters. I don't, I don't, I, I think just keep doing, let's keep doing it with the increase. Yes, with the increase. Okay, can we all agree with the increase? If we increase the budget one penny uh, or 10 cents, then we increase this, you know, uh, proportionate to what it's already been in the budget. I agree. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Meaning roads and sidewalks. Yes, roads and sidewalks. Okay. okay. Are you keeping that as a priority? Well, it doesn't have to be a priority, no. So just make it this? <clears throat> just make it as a standard. We got a new standard. Okay, that's what I think. So we can still so claim funding. it as a priority as a commission because we are in increasing what we're expending, but now the staff knows it's a standard. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Thank and the standard you. is that whatever the percentage is of roads and sidewalks in the budget, if we increase the budget, we increase roads and sidewalks proportionate to uh -huh. that amount. I like it. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, who's going to go first with their three priorities that, are, that don't include roads and sidewalks? Commissioner Cantu? Oh, go ahead. I'm listening. Commissioner Henry? The three priorities? Mm -mm. Nope. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Reed? Give me a minute. Okay. Well, one of mine is already on the affordable housing. Afford yeah. Yes. All right. And what was the other of the three? The, uh, and the other one was continue to um, increase activities for youth, seniors, and, and visitors. Hmm. And Drew is over there writing the, the, the top one, so if you can get these. Okay. <laughs> Mine is beach side. Yep. Mine too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like the, the Lennox Park. I, we've been talking about improving, even though we do it often. We've done improvements over there periodically. but. Lennox Park is one of the few parks in that area, in Zone 3 on beach side between ISV and Silver Beach area. Mm -hmm. It's well used. It's, uh, it's a community of people. I have kids coming there in the evening. There's a bus drop off right there at the park. They stay and play. People with walking dogs, etc. But because it gets a lot of use, it has a lot of wear and tear. So I would like to see some improved lighting if possible in that particular area. Uh, we may have to refurbish some of the equipment. Um, and just some safety conscious landscaping for that particular area because we have some reports of homeless who went camp in the back parts of it. But doing something more with Lennox Park, I think, would be great. I have a question about one of these. Uh, I'd like to know what it means. Uh, mental health awareness training and assistance for public safety, what does that mean? It's on this sheet. What is that? Page two. What 
up the uh, that was the last year's comments from the uh, community, right? Okay, but I think they're addressing that. I think police yeah. and fire are addressing it. Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Strickland? Well, my main priority would be to, to uh, add more life year-round to our uh, Main Street area. For too long, we have allowed it to sit there and allowed the, the uh, property owners to make a lot of money during a few events, and then the rest of the year, people sit around there and drink beer with the neighborhood people and, and uh, we need to be doing something there to assist that that street to be a year-round draw for our tourists our tourism um, I know a lot of people are afraid to go over there after dark unless special events are going on um, we should be increasing the lighting and cameras uh, I think some money has been uh, allotted to that I know I, I asked for that and uh, I would also, I know that we don't own the property over at the boardwalk. That's on my list. But, you know, uh, we don't really have a boardwalk. We got two rides over there. They're not on the boardwalk. We have nothing over there, really. A couple games, a little pizza place or something. There was a time when that, that area was hopping. I remember back when I first moved here, the back of the Hilton on the bottom, they had little shops, stores and stuff. They mm -hmm. had music over there on Friday and Saturday night. <clears throat> and it was it, it was quite a draw, especially in the summertime with tourists. We don't have a whole lot going on over there now. So I think there's one, one little store or something, maybe two souvenir shop, t-shirt shop. We don't have that, what we used to have there. Uh, and we then we say we don't have, uh, our tourism is, is, uh, is lacking. Well, we don't have anything for tourists to come and do in that area. We used to have, what was that thing, a space needle or something? Mm -hmm. We had a uh, chairlift went out on the pier. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, at one time we had a, a they called it a uh, roller coaster. I didn't see it as that, but the tourists seemed to like it. Uh, there was a lot more stuff going on there, and if we, if we ever want to draw tourists, we, we've got to do something to entertain them. And, and we don't have that over there. We nice basically course. have nothing. Mm -hmm. So uh, we need to work on that if we if we want to continue to be the world's most famous beach. Okay. Perhaps it's an RFP we could put out just to sort of redo some of those we areas. We don't control the property, so that's a problem. But we do have some property out there, don't we, that we do have some sort of anything out there that's out? The one that but you are walk. putting forward for the best. That's a before, yeah, okay, that's what that is. Okay, before 2011 or, or 2011 is when they ended it. That uh, they could um, eminent domain property and give it to developers, and that was done. Uh, I think Dino just found, finally finished his battle that's been going on for almost 20 years. Uh, so now all that property is in private hands and just sitting there. Uh, that used to be part of the uh, Joyland amusements, all the stuff. We had the go-karts on the roof, those kinds of things. We don't have the, I don't think we have the ability legally, Mr. Attorney could tell us probably, to force uh, something to happen over there because we really just don't have any entertainment whatsoever to be able to call it a boardwalk like it used to be. Mm -hmm. Not a thing. Yeah, I mean, we'd have to use carrots, not sticks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's not a... And that costs money. And they've been making money off of that property over there for years. So. Okay. Yes, so, ma'am. Um, I had a couple of residents say something to me along the lines of um, underground utilities. If we could do something with that, getting some of the, the lighting and whatnot. We've got some really uh, dilapidated, <coughs> sort of hideous-looking wires and whatnot. I see on Beachside they are making some standard cement poles, but to get um, some underground things that we know it's expensive, but it's going to keep it on the, or at least clean up what we have, meaning, you know, get, just make it looking nicer. So some of the major thoroughfares, for example, parts of ISB look great, 
Um, Nova has some major driving arteries. Orange Ave has some major driving arteries. If we, Ridgewood, I'm always hoping to clean Ridgewood up a little bit, even if it's just from beautification. Just the major roads that we have. And finally, I had a couple of residents approach me about um, creating, which I know we have, uh, bikes and trails that head into the downtown core or take you from universities or little neighborhood residential areas, creating uh, bicycle pathways, bicycle lanes on the roads perhaps that take you to downtown Beach Street and that then take you to Beachside because they want to be able, and that was the plan, right? The interconnected mm -hmm. um, bike paths was, was part of a bigger project, I think, that Kelly White was working right. on. Yes. And just trying to expand that a little bit more from the neighborhoods. Okay, that's good. That's good. Anything else? Commissioner yeah. yes. Harris? Well, for zone one to stay on top of the flooding and the stormwater management, which we're doing. Uh, also, A1A, um, I know that the redevelopment had gotten uh, some quotes, so I don't know if they could make a presentation in regards to underground lighting uh, for the areas on a A1A that the FDOT is not addressing. Um, also, maybe improvements of vacant lots, maybe we could have different um, standards in our LDC for the vacant lots on A1A. I know it's only three things, but this I'm counting as A1A is one. Um, also, add some parking lot specifications to our LDC, which I know they're working on. I think that will be um, a big help, especially for the vacant lots on A1A that people are <coughs> using for parking. And also, um, I have a big request for the tennis on City Island, still for my residents. And if we could find a park, or maybe to do a dog park on Beachside in Zone One. A what? Dog a dog park so on Zone One. Planet. Yeah. We're looking at the tower now. So. Mm -hmm. Which and school is that? R.J. Long Street. Yeah, the Lennox Park one is closer to ISB. This mm -hmm. one will be, and there's a huge lot of kids down the other way too. And I have a question about the E Zone because the boardwalk is part of this e-zone does e-zone have any funding are we still using the e-zone what's happening is that no. a distant memory the, yeah they didn't they actually did not actually move forward with it based off of information i received back from Dennis. was that the accurate statement that it really never got it, it never got put into the land development code there's no standards associated with it. there was a master plan mm. yeah yeah that never had to I think it could go without saying with Zone 6 that we definitely want to still stay on top of the flooding. Mm -hmm. um, still got some areas that are dark, I'm being texted. Some areas are dark, dark and underground lighting. Mm -hmm. um, but I, what I really want to also say about is MMB. You know, back in the day it was its own little downtown. Mm -hmm. And when you think of the stretch that we have from Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune's statue to Daytona State, something to incentivize those business owners who already have a business even if it's just a, a, a brush of kindness or a brush of love, paint, do something, um, that we could help, perhaps help them. Uh, we've just, we spent all this money and got all this money to beautify Daisy Stockton Park, and we want the rest of the community to look just as inviting. You know, um, when I went to San Francisco, we couldn't wait to go to Chinatown. When you come to Daytona Beach, I want people who can't wait to get to Midtown. Um, you know, between that and going down, um, MLK. That's the only time Mary and Martin met was at MLK and MMB uh -huh. in Daytona Beach. <laughs> so um, something to incentivize those businesses. And then I'm I'm not I, I'm a proponent of the, of eminent domain. It just it really bothers me that we've got buildings that people have done nothing with that their parents have invested in and they've just allowed them to rot. And it doesn't look good. Um, it doesn't feel good. And um, if we can do something to help them realize that, that they're holding us up or backing us up. So would that be something that would be a commission vote with regard to whether or not we are willing to support eminent domain? We can't just eminent domain. You might want to explain it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have to research this, but I think the Florida legislature uh, uh, adopted a provision that uh, restricts the use of eminent domain uh, 
for the purpose of turning around and giving property to a developer. But I'm going to make sure of that for, for you, and I'll report back to you uh, for the next meeting. Yeah. Okay. And then if they want to answer, yeah, uh, just real quickly, the e-zone, uh, the e-zone plan was, was general, it was accepted by the city commission, the area was designated where it would occur, but the, uh, there were no development standards that were actually applied to it in the land development code. We have a holding area in our land development code for it, but it just never moved forward. I think there were some questions on whether or not it would be successful and it just never took, it never took ground. It just never went anywhere. But the city commission approved it? It, they accepted the plan. They accepted the plan. It, there was a master plan done, and, and it was accepted, but it was never really instituted to say, okay, let's move it, forward and do this. It is nothing. It's nothing. Easy. Does that differ from the enterprise zone? Mm. No, it's the, it it differs from the enterprise zone. Yes. Okay. Uh, the entertainment zone, E-zone. E-zone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I would also like to, not to forget um, the Mason Bridge painting that in our budget that we all agreed on. Mm -hmm needs to be done and the seawall the main I mean, it's not main street um, Mason Avenue and um, the seawall at the band shell needs to be done it's pretty bad so it sounds like we're looking to spruce up even if it's just a coat of paint yeah if there's some sort of something we can come up with that so is that possible to create a citywide like beautification. building beautification paint fund is that possible for us to do we say hey this is the goal these are the color schemes for each area each person is responsible Beach side for needs help. whatever <laughs> and it's the entire city and uh, we also had discussed a while back I mean I like your concept of uh, pursuing the the historical aspect of things as making that a priority because that mm -hmm. is something that we can say come to MLK come to MLB this is why you're coming here mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. So continuing to work on that in whatever way possible. But I like the concept of a citywide beautification paint. You're mm -hmm. all responsible to do it. These are the colors you choose from and we provide a stipend or we say, hey, let's just do it. Yeah, and I think we have something like that with code now, but people aren't necessarily abiding by it because right. there's some colors out there in my zone that just, whoo, gee. Yeah, but they, there's no, you can't stop them from building, doing most colors. Mm. Uh, no, I thought we had a, a each area yeah. had a scheme. Yeah, each area has a scheme. I don't, know. I don't think it's citywide. I think I the, the redevelopment, redevelopment areas so. that there are redevelopment yeah, areas. It's only yeah. in redevelopment areas, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that's not it. Not everywhere. You know, exactly. Because you can't do it everywhere. What are yours, Mr. Mayor? Um, uh, Mr. Mayor, before you go. So uh, affordable housing is always going to be at the forefront for me. It's something that I've talked about for years, and I want to see us continue to stay on top of that and stay on top of uh, what portion developers are going to pay uh, in affordable housing as well. As we talk about parks and recreation, I'd like to see, in addition to what activities we're going to be doing for the seniors and the children, just what activities we can put in for some of the zones like zone five who are neighborhood zones but don't have very many festivals so maybe uh some food truck festivals going on in, in the zone maybe a weekend market in the courtyard at ysg because we have that beautiful courtyard that is never used and it would be a great opportunity to allow people to just come and vend in the market on a saturday morning at ysg um, and then also wanted to make sure that we continue to um, communication and relationships with the police department, with the children in, zone, in the zones, especially zones, my zone, Paula's zone. Um, I, you've been doing some really great work with that, by Please. the way. Thank mm -hmm. you. Really Thank great. You. I think zone three too. We have a large. We have got that mm -hmm. keychain up there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Can we include fire with that, please? Absolutely. Police and fire. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I, I don't know. I can't say absolutely, but I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. So I think that those relationships, those type of relationships are important for community building. So I do want to see some more of that and see that continue to maybe spread to different zones and different areas as well. Um, and then finally, um, with the parks and uh, with the branding of the community. I know that we had talked 
maybe two year, a year or so ago about branding each particular zone and we hadn't really done much with that. I'd like to see what some of your ideas, I know Mr. Manager said he had some ideas of branding in the zones. We haven't really done much more, much of that. I know each zone has its own personality and I'd like to see some ways that I don't, whether it's signage, whether it's, mm -hmm. you know, what's important things that have happened in that zone, uh, some things that we could do to brand that zone, but still tie it all mm -hmm. into the city. Mm -hmm. As you stated, the color scheme, I really like that idea. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea that I had not thought about, uh, but just more branding in the mm -hmm. zones that we had talked about years ago. So do you recall, I'm so tired of saying it sometimes, do you recall a few years back, I repeated myself and I said, hey, wouldn't it be great if we took um, the, uh, the wraps and put them, mm -hmm. uh, right, for years I've said that. Mm -hmm. And then I see One Daytona does it, I mm -hmm. see the park does it, mm -hmm. I see I the city, well. the mm -hmm. county do it, they do it with regard to pedestrian Daytona walkways. It's a quick fix. And it's a quick fix, yeah, and I've been asking nice. for years if we could do that. And we've had conversations about it, and so I'm just wondering, is that like a simple, quick it, it's way? It's not as simple because uh, we have to get approval from the different entities that own yeah, who those owns the bus? Is That's that the, the problem? Because we may so not I thought own they were out. And somebody not. also has to pay for it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how much it costs, but to, to me, that's not a bad use of harbor funds. Mm -hmm. but no, it's not bad it's it's a good good use at all. Thank you. Yeah, so. I like it. Mm -hmm. Nice, and that's a, a great way to begin the process of branding mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Henry, I did meet with Beth on okay. the branding. So hopefully, if everyone's on board with it, to have them present what we discussed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's true. You did bring it back up. Mm -hmm. We had talked about it probably before you came on, mm -hmm. and then you came and you circled around with it. So, yeah, give you props for that. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, let me ask a question since you all like what, what Chief and I have been doing with Peace. Where do you want your contributions to come from, ARPA or from your bike week funds? Because they need to well, order this because we're getting ready for the fall. I wanted to participate at Dickinson to see if we could do something at Dickinson, but I didn't hear back from staff. Mm -hmm. I think it would be great to include fire and police at Dickinson. Yeah. I would also the children as ARPA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would also me. like to see the police get their own training center too because I know they have to share with the we sheriff's department. Huh? We just approved it. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. Is that going to mm -hmm. be coming back? Because I like oh, yeah. to see that yeah. being. Going through that process. Okay. Because yeah. I like mm -hmm. to see that being funded too. Yep. Yeah. And they got their own shooting range. Nice. One more thing. Mm -hmm. One more thing before we end up here. You know, we keep talking about affordable housing, affordable housing trust fund, tied to development, but then we have to have to make the developer whole somehow or another for their contribution. I would like to see us have a discussion and, and come to some type of agreement of how much money as a city uh, we're willing to put into a trust fund uh, according to the square footage of development and just leave the developer out of it because we got to make them whole anyway and, and decide what we're willing to put into a trust fund and move this thing along because we've been talking about it off and on for years and we tie it to development and then they do this and then we have to make them whole because they have land rights, property rights and that sort of thing. Let's just bite the bullet and decide what we're willing to put in there per square foot of however much development is going on in town at any given time and, and get it going and move it forward instead of keeping on batting it back and forth and, and uh, just putting it off basically. Uh, so if we could give that some thought, I, uh, I would like that. I think some other people in this town that are really behind affordable housing would, would like that if we would go ahead and bite the bullet, make a decision on how much we're willing to, to do because whatever a developer does, we've still got to give that back to him anyway. So let's just leave them out of it and decide what we're willing to do. Are we still waiting on that Nexus report? We started, we changed a couple of things, we're still waiting to see what we need, what the inventory is. I mean, what's happening yeah, with that? That's not the only way to do it, and that's not good. Um, she, you know, answer her question. Your Are we question still pursuing the Nexus? No, we're, we, you oh. all, we had our discussion. We're just going down the trust fund rent roadway to just put, set up a trust fund utilizing working with the Florida Corp that the um, 
Mr. Thomas just talked about, but we're going to be recommending to put some funds into the trust fund, and how do we continue to have people putting money in it? Okay. Why do you forward? all think that we should just pay for it? What, what do you mean? You're basically implying that we should simply pay for it without considering any form of a trust that the developer has to put something into. When you talk about... Um, Not staff. Yeah. Staff, we're recommending that developers also put funds into trust. Staff yeah, is but, not we, a, but I want it to be a requirement, yeah, even if it's a dollar, yeah, that's what even if it's $10. Now. You go with a nominal fee so that they, so that they don't feel frustrated. You uh -huh. go with a nominal fee, mm -hmm. but it needs to be something. Okay. But the second thing is making them whole does not mean that you have to give them the money back. They're going to get tax there's credits. A, there's a lot of ways to make them whole. Sure. Mm -hmm. To give you give them more density rights. You give them there's just a lot of ways to make them whole. Mm -hmm. it, it just should not you know, I've been quiet, I didn't say anything now. We should not have taken this long. No, that's right. It's just it's unacceptable. But there's a reason that we didn't just take no, I mean you've been pushing no, it for a long no, time. No, no, it's staff. Staff should have done a better job. Mm. We should have had things here. We've been talking about this for two years. Before the manager came. Years. With the Live Local mm -hmm. Act. So, they can come in and automatically and do affordable housing and get tax yeah, credits and not. get tax credits because three of those places that we have already approved way before this Live Local Act is already they're already getting tax credits because they were allowed by state statute. Yeah, that's so, accurate, I mean, but, but that's not the point of on the issue of a trust fund. That doesn't solve that. That's something that we should have had before us to make mm -hmm. a decision on. Whether it's whether we had to make a decision on a uh, nexus study or whatever it was, we should have had an opportunity, voted on it, and said, "Do the study." But okay, I didn't want to go down that road, so hurry up and bring something to us. Any y'all have anything else? <laughs> like hurry up. up and bring something. <laughs> hurry up, because it's just okay. I have a question: Is it possible if a person takes care of a vacant lot that you could? Give, so you say you have a vacant lot that has code enforcement on it, liens on it, and a person comes to the city and takes care of that lot, that at some point we could, if we had liens on it, that we could give it to that person that took care of that lot. Well, I mean, if, if we foreclosed on the liens and took possession of the property, we could then give them possession of the property. Uh, we wouldn't have any inherent police power to convey property owned by one person who's not maintaining it to another person. We don't have that ability. So foreclosing on the liens, taking the property, and and taking possession of it's ours, we can do with the property, you know, what we want. Okay, and we can do it. Once we foreclose on it, though, right. the benefit of just giving it away is not really a good idea on our part because we've expended mm -hmm. funds to be able to foreclose on it. In the scenario you're talking about, somebody of, of their own volition has gone ahead and cleaned up property, so that would be a proper consideration for you all to engage in, whether yes. you wanted to make money off the sale or, or reward somebody for their voluntary behavior. Um, the reason I ask that is I want to create a culture where people take care of a property, and even if they have a, a, an investment interest in that property, a, a resident sees a property and they take care of it, and we foreclose on it, and then that person wanted to build something on it. Mm -hmm. But we don't have enough of an altruistic spirit overall. What's your? You're gonna have everybody terms? fighting over foreclosed property. Well, I don't know if they'd be fighting over it. You got to take care of it. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I mean, can you even just walk onto someone else's property? And start cleaning it up. No, you, you can't. Like it. I don't think legally no, you, you can't. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think it, it, there could be problems. The owner could trespass yeah. and, and then keep somebody from getting on the property. Yeah. So and, you couldn't do so. Well, I mean, if, if they did it and, and presented that as something that had been done for a while without our hmm. uh, incentive, we, we could still. Okay. You know, that was just a question. Yeah. It, was there anything else? I just, okay. Um, I think. <clears throat> that we have established certain standards. I think affordable housing is a standard that we want to say is important to us. And so if you had to just list a priority 
I think it continues to be a top priority, certainly for me. It will continue to be number one. Mm -hmm. But I also think, and we said the same about roads, I think that what we do with our young people and our senior citizens continues to be important. But what I'm hearing tonight, and I'm in agreement with, outside of the standards that we are trying to establish as a commission of what's important, as far as budgetary expenditures moving forward this year, I think we're saying that the beachside community should be an area that we focus on. Mm -hmm. For me, and that we don't control the boardwalk, but finding ways to incentivize, to recruit, mm -hmm. to say that, you know, we want a better boardwalk. We want a more dynamic boardwalk. And I, I believe that on the beach side, that is the number one priority on the beach side is the boardwalk. Mm -hmm. As important as Main Street is, the boardwalk is the destination. It's adjacent to the beach. Mm -hmm. And I don't disagree that we want to get more lighting on Main Street. Um, and so I think that should be, um, you know, an expenditure. Even if we're still going back to the, the original thing that came out of the beach side uh, action committee, when we talked about the lights, uh, draping the trees with lights, mm -hmm. draping the street covering mm -hmm. tapestry with lights. We've got to show that it's a financial um, commitment made on the part of the city in that sense. So I think Main Street would be good. We're in great shape with ISB being uh, restored and going to a, a new level on the B side. Mm -hmm. That's a big win. Contrary to uh, popular opinion, we, we've got, you know, new townhouses going up. We actually have, you know, the Renaissance Hotel should come online before long. So there are some exciting things taking place on the beach, but we've got to take those areas that are, are jaded and find a way to, um, to, to help restore them. Um, so I would have to say that's a priority for me. Um, the Black Heritage Trail. Mm -hmm. We talk about how do we uh, make uh, MMB and, and uh, MLK uh, destinations. Well, that, that trail, I guess I've been gone a long time. Household is saying, where's daddy? Um, um, that trail, I believe, would, is, is an important aspect and I don't just mean the trail itself, I mean mm -hmm. what's taking us so long to get the videos or the uh, recorded, they're done? We have a couple of them done. We're working on the QR codes that will be released, but we have been recording some of our videos. Okay, that's great. Yeah. That's yeah, great the, to hear. So we want the videos. The, the grant funding that uh, we've tentatively been awarded, uh, just Pardon. waiting on the governor's adoption. <coughs> okay. To finish it out. Okay. Uh, I think it's great that we have two murals, but we need yeah. we need five murals. We need six murals, um, and I don't I don't know what the holdup is. Um, I know a couple of business owners that want one. I'm going to go and talk to them. Try to move that forward. I mean, we have some great assets, right? Thurman House. Mm -hmm. We have we have an MLK Street. We have an MMB Street. There are things we could do there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I think uh, also. Where are we as it relates to designating those areas with the plaques or something that indicates that you're in a historic location? Which could part. tie in with our beautification yeah. concept mm -hmm. with the paint, the themes, the colors, the banners. Yeah. There's, we have stuff to work with on that. Okay. Because I think, I think what we're saying, and I'm, I'm saying this, across the city, we want to see, you know, you got the Mason Bridge that the commissioner just reminded us, Seabreeze Bridge, um, and the seawall. What we're saying is that we're doing a lot of things right. You know, our police department is coming up to speed. We're getting a new fire department coming up to speed. We've got uh, proper budgeting for our sidewalks and our roads. Now what we need, what we're trying to say, I think as a commission is, what are the areas we did a good job with Seabreeze, with some beautification and, and, and you know, I think that's the number one priority, though, in terms of what we want to see budgeted, is how do we make ourselves look better. 
vibrant and look the part of the great American destination mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in those areas that we control we want man when we were at the um, uh, at Embarillo today the video that they showed of mm. the park mm -hmm. you would you 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 would have thought you were in paradise That's looking true. at that Mm -hmm. Right when you look at that video, you know, and they got me and Mr. Fiatra, they're recording us, and I'm looking back behind us. It's like, wow. I was like, where are you? That's Daytona <laughs> Beach. Mm -hmm. Now that that's that's just fantastic. Now we know that everything's not going to look like that, but you still you, we can we can continue to to do better. And I think uh, even what you're talking about, uh, what was the issue earlier that? Commissioner had that you pick it back, no? Branding. 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 Mm -hmm. That's all. That's all a part of it. Mm -hmm. It's all a part of mm -hmm. what we want to say is that that we've got the goods, you know, in so many areas. Now, how do we brand ourselves as this great mm -hmm. destination, and how do we fix some of the parts that we want to fix? Um, because, you know, you look at one day Tony, you look at how the West Side is coming along, aside from the traffic, beautiful. But the best part of Daytona Beach, historically, is that beachside, beach. beach, the beach itself. Mm -hmm. So let's try to fix that. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything. We know what the standard is. Oh, I would like to see some sort of pizza place on MMB. A pizza parlor. Pizza parlor, sandwich shop. Sandwich shop. You got to have some destination. And I understand the frustration when you say eminent domain because you see... The same old, same old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and so what, what, what can we do to, to stop that? Mm -hmm. Well, part of it is what can we do to incentivize those who are already down there mm -hmm. toiling? Exactly. Because you I have some people first. who are toiling and, and they're in something. it. They're trying to make something of it. So we got to find a way to help mm -hmm. those people mm -hmm. um, to, to, to be successful. And I think by, by doing, addressing that, that may, may, may want developers to come there they may want the other folks to do something about their properties. Correct. We can shame them. Now, A1A, we've got a plan for, you know, revitalizing that. One of the things that I would like to see us do next summer, and the mayor's uh, fitness, math and fitness boot camp is in the Snebley Center, and it's off to a great start. But one of the challenges, I think, that we got to remember next year is that before we plan the field trips for the students, we got to make sure that if we have programs that we want to bring in, that those programs are get to the table early so that they can be a part of the plan. Mm. So because I'm with the nine to the, the morning hours with the kids having a lot of time on task of learning and being prepared for school. And I, I say that because we know how important the summer slip is and we don't we want to use our parks to that benefit. And I say that to say this also. Yesterday the school board announced that Champion Elementary led the district in I believe it was math scores for incre increasing and improving the lowest quartile in elementary. Turati Small Elementary led the district for increasing the scores in students in ELA. That's Eng English Language Arts. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That was just awesome news. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the principal at uh, Champion had been harassing me about money for a um, for a golf cart to help control the perimeter of her school. Mm -hmm. And I kept telling her, No, I'm not giving you any money. I'm not doing it. Because uh, I don't believe in golf carts as much. But after she got that big award, I said, well, I, mm -hmm. I, think, I think if you think that's what your school needs, <laughs> I'll figure a way to help you because you're successful. Principal of the year. Principal of the year also. Mm -hmm. um, so that's two, but also Seabreeze, which is a Daytona <laughs> Beach school, was uh, successful as the, I forget what, what area they had, but they had the best scores. Uh, I believe it was in math and science for high school. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this, our schools are doing well with what they have. Mm -hmm. so when you say the lowest quartile, 
that means they're taking the students who challenge who are the most challenged and they're raising their, their standard and that's what we want to see that's the number one uh, objective and agenda in any school is what are you doing with the least of these mm -hmm. um, you know, I always say it's easy to take fours and fives and you know so you Spruce Creek folks with the big IB program of 1,300 students, it's, it's easier down there. Speaking of schools, uh, Mr. Mayor, has anyone heard this, that they're thinking about maybe taking Riverview to the old Turity? Uh I did hear that, but I, I think that uh, there's a lot of, I did hear that. A, it was an idea that's being floated, mm -hmm. but I'm not, I'm not knowledgeable of it to speak of it, but a person who works in that department did mention it to me, I think it's um, not such a good idea. Same here. Um, okay. Uh, and I think uh, for me, that, that, is, that is it. So do we have a consensus of three things? I think not. I think what we have is a consensus of one thing and the same old thing that we've always had. We want the same old thing that we've been getting, and that's been a priority. But we also want to be Vibrant, vibrant, dynamic, beautiful, colorful. supportive, colorful. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Based on your comments, I, I just wanted to throw up three things that I believe capture the um, essence of what is being discussed. One is strategic focus on our beach side to improve upon our core tourism residential assets, um, and that provides for a focus of underground utilities beautification. Improving community assets, providing for public art, uh, historic signage, um, and making a place to work and play. And lastly, assisting businesses to thrive and beautify to help increasing uh, economic prosperity. I think that's a good idea, but I also want to say that doesn't mean, uh, staff, that we go home and we come back with a much bigger budget so that we just continue to uh, get we bigger. We can't do that. Okay, I'm, I'm just telling you, I don't want to see, a, a, you know, 50 new employees. Okay, what I want, okay, I hear you, but, but we want to see an emphasis on these things and how we can support those things. Yeah, we don't have the resources to get it. I think our AC goes off at 830. That's why it's getting more than that. That's That's understandable. Yeah, that's understandable. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Okay. 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 Is that a way to tell me to stop talking? <laughs> Pretty much. Okay. Yes, sir. Pretty much. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. That's a good thing. We want that air to go off. Yeah. That would just cost a lot of money. Okay, do we have anything else? That's it. All right. We'll try to have something back with you. Two weeks. Two weeks. Good job. This meeting is adjourned.